<laughs> Hello, and welcome to High Rollers D&D, Dungeons & Dragons 5th Edition campaign here on the Yogscast. Thank you, Tom Aisley. I am your Dungeon Master, Mark Sherlock Humes. Joining me this week, we have all of our players. We have Rhiannon. Hello. We have Trot. We have Kim. Hey. And on the other side, Tom Hazel. Having a good laugh there. Katie. Hi. Everyone's here. We're all ready. Oh, I was having a drink, Kim. Why are we play oh. some Why are you laughing? Dungeons and Dragons. <laughs> hey, a couple of things before we start. First of all, big shout out to our sponsors this week. Woo! Uh, our first sponsor, D&D Beyond, our lovely sponsor. They've been sponsoring us for a while. Thank you so much. These guys. It's the official digital tool set for Dungeons and Dragons. Cool, a couple of cool things this week. Uh, they just announced that an encounter builder is on the way. Oh, shit. Oh, so if you're a DM, that's very fancy. exciting. <laughs> um, Adam from D&D Beyond talked a little bit about it in the dev update live stream and yeah, on Twitter, so you should cool. check that out. Uh, also, don't forget they have the D&D Beyond Discord now, so if you're a fan and you want to chat to other D&D players, maybe find people to play with, uh, people to ask questions, chat to the D&D Beyond staff, go and sign up. You can go to dndbeyond.com forward slash discord and join up and keep an eye out for that encounter builder. I'm looking forward to it. Um, it's very, very exciting. I don't know what's happening, we're laughing. <laughs> Quick note, they are not a sponsor this week, but I want to say that Elderwood, are, Elderwood Academy, who sponsored us last week, are extending their special offer. Oh, yeah. um, it's going to go to the rest of the month, so if you make an order over on Elderwood Academy, and you put Happy Birthday High Rollers in your order notes, they will give you a set of mini metal dice for free, and there's no minimum there's, spend. There's um, details on our, twi uh, on our Twitter, Twitter account, yeah. So, yeah. Uh, so check those out. On Twitter. So not, they're not a sponsor this week, but I wanted nope. to give them a shout out because they extended that offer. But we do have a brand we new do. sponsor. We do. They're joining us for a few months. Display. Uh, we'd like wow. we, display. No, that that we we uh, have uh, one on display <laughs> for you here. Yeah. Um, mm. So a big thank you to Displate. Uh, Displate is a website that sells magnet-mounted metal prints. They're durable, high quality, and they work with tons of artists and brands to provide you with amazing and stylish prints for your room and home. We've all picked our personal favorites. We went and picked a bunch of them ourselves, and you can check them out as part of the High Rollers collection, um, and you can buy them for yourself. There should be a link in chat. I Mind think we should have that. Yeah. Uh, you Mind can go and check those out. You Mind can go check those out. This is an example of a Displate. Mm. We've had to put it on an easel because we can't attach it to the walls in here, but it looks really lovely. It's We're really excited metal. to get them. It's made of metal. Yeah. It looks super good. Um, very, very uh, glad to be working with them. Also, at the end of each month, we'll do a giveaway where we'll give someone away. That's not this month, but at the end of the month, we'll be doing some giveaways yeah. so you yeah. can get and some of our for, choices. Yeah, it'll be for some of our choices, which yes. you will see yeah. rotating on yeah. this each here easel. Each month. Mm. Each month. Each, each, each Sunday. Yeah. yeah. We're giving away next Sunday. What? Yeah. We, we should be getting oh, some, some yes. sent in. On so there you go. End of February. That's not right. No, no, it's not. Anyway, <laughs> moving swiftly on, a couple of other things I just briefly wanted to mention. Um, one thing you might want to check out, if you're a fan of knowing what goes on behind the screen at Ooh. High Rollers, I'm going to be doing a new video series over on my channel, which is called High Rollers Behind the Screen, where I'm going to be talking about uh, an episode as like a recap, but also talking about some of the mechanical stuff, some of the things that never happened, some of the things that never were, uh, that kind of thing. So keep an eye out on that. That's my, on my channel, Tabletop Weekly. Um, we're also, I wanted to mention, this is not confirmed yet, but there are a couple of conventions that we're going to be, we are planning to be at, that we're currently talking to the, the people to be at. Um, these aren't confirmed yet, but I wanted to give you a heads up because they're happening very, very soon. So some of us will might, might be at PAX East. This one. Um, PAX East. Thanks, thanks Tom Hazel. Hazel. That's amazing, I love it. Um, we're going to be in, we're going to be there with a games company. I don't want to confirm who yet, just in case things fall through. We're going to be there with a games company. We're going to be doing signings at their booth, that kind of stuff. So that's PAX East. Still um, uh, And then also TwitchCon. This TwitchCon one. Europe. <laughs> He's got it. Uh, <laughs> TwitchCon Europe in April. Again, we're talking to them about potentially being there for signings. Is it April? in April, and maybe a little live show, a little cheeky High Rollers live session. Ooh, so, yes. um, that will obviously be on Twitch as well, but if you're planning on going, you'll be able to meet us there. Again, not confirmed. If you buy tickets and we don't go there, please don't be mad, yeah. because we're still waiting for these to confirm, but because they're so close, I just wanted to give you guys a heads up. That's it from me with the announcements. Anything else? Anything I've missed? Anything? Got to do Rubik's Cube. Chris tries a new Rubik's Cube. And also, this, this plate is amazing. This plate. Is amazing. That plate. That plate. That plate. This plate. Which plate? This oh, plate. All dead nice. plates. So if you want this plate or that plate, go to this plate. <laughs> and with that, uh, let's play the Aroas <laughs> intro video. Hey.
Hi Steve, you could have gone live then, that's fine, I've no shame. Everybody knows that the foxes in Robin Hood Disney movie were hot, right? Mm, what? <laughs> anyway. What? <laughs> <laughs> Moving on. Yes. That's the See, you really there. Yeah. Up top. Yeah. <laughs> That's the start of the podcast. That's the start of the podcast. <laughs> Welcome back to Erois. Let's do a little recap. Get your laughs in now because it's about to get real. About to get re uh, yeah, really Rhiannon, real. Yes. Yeah, Rhiannon. Yeah, Rhiannon. you were crying in a pit of yeah. guilt. <laughs> so, yeah. oh, God, last yeah. time on Erois, our party of travelers are still in the small city of Kaylee's Rest where a number of events have been slowly unfolding. The party have encountered a group of religious zealots called the Ashbringers who operate within the church of the sun god Palador. Having clashed with them once in the Temple of Hesper, the party witnessed a public statement by the abbot S of the local Bright Flame Abbey denouncing these Ashbringers, and a tense conversation followed where she attempted to praise the party for their actions. The party have also been helping Sentry, the guardian paladin, meet with another of her kind called Breeze. The two discussed a way to save another guardian called Tracker, who was nearing the end of his lifespan. Suspicious? The party decided to go to a crypt chamber where Breeze would conduct the ritual to save Tracker, where it turned out that he had captured a member of the Ashbringers who had he had plotted to kill, uh, who had plotted to kill a local show shopkeeper and intended to sacrifice him in order to save Tracker. Sentry, though initially uncertain, chose to save the Ashbringer and disrupt the ritual, and the battle ensued. Badly wounded, Breeze consumed a potion, turned to mist, and escaped into the cracks in the chamber's ceiling which you believe leads to the temple of Kilara, the goddess of death above. And that is where we start today. I still have your initiative order, if anybody wishes to do anything, but if you wish to just attend to yourselves, you can do that. We still have our initiative yeah, order. Yeah, still got your initiative order. Um, because you've seen, you saw Breeze basically evaporate up into the cracks in the ceiling. Did he actually escape? I mean, as far as you can see, he's he's any turned left? into mist. There's no mist left. Right. Um, his action, his move, and then his dash action basically got him up through the ceiling. But how far away he's gotten, you don't know. It depends on are you looking to pursue him or are you concerned with sorting yourselves out for now I after know. such a close battle. I feel like the only way we know into and out of the place is a it's very ripped. long journey mm. outside of Haley's Rest. I believe that... It was, Scout did mention that there must be an entrance into the Temple of Kalara, but you haven't seen one. Yeah. And Breeze didn't like entering that way. Yes, you would have seen him. Yeah. Could have missed it down. <laughs> I mean... <laughs> so, yeah, at this point, it just it's more up to you guys. I've kept the initiative just in case there's anything you guys wanted to do. I think. But if you just want to be like, nope, we're going to sort ourselves out, then that's fine. We're all in a pretty bad way as well, aren't we? Yeah. So, Who yeah. would be going first? So it was uh, so Breeze literally ended the round. So it would be uh, they're all dead. Uh, <laughs> it's well, the echo. The, the, corrupt, the corrupted dead. echoes are all dead. So it would be Quill or Sentry who are both tied. From the second highest initiative. So okay. I, feel I feel like, like that is very is, appropriate. I feel like this is definitely your your call. Yeah. We'll follow. Well, you see the yeah. chamber as you saw it before. These four stone columns with this glowing, now dull red ritual circle painted on the ground, probably in blood. Um, and you can see the body of the Ashbringer, uh, Wilden. Um, he is alive, but has been very badly drained. You can see his skin has turned pale white, his veins all showing. Um, and then Tracker's body is currently being cradled by Scout. You can see that there is a very faint flicker of life, but it's basically fading away. And you can see that he is um, fading. Okay. Um, Beyond saving, this is his natural lifespan ending. Yeah, I think I'll uh, just lay on hands the Ashbringer. Okay. And okay. Heal him up a little bit. Okay. How many? How many points for? Uh, let's see. Let's do ten. Ten HP back to him. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. You watch as some of the colour to his flesh begins to return. His eyes open. You can see he's bound, um, and it, some sort of something is preventing him from moving and speaking. Um, he has like loose ropes around him, but his face almost seems frozen. But he's aware, and his eyes are wide, scanning around. Um, but he does not seem to be uh, capable of moving at this point. Um, okay, well that's what Sentry goes. Anything else? Or I mean, I'm happy to drop out. I mean, as far as I'm concerned, I'm like I've broken any. Combat stance Quill has. Okay, all right. In uh, that case, yeah, we'll, we'll jump out of initiative then. Yeah. I'll just. Um, 
rolling some dice. He's seeing how far away Bree's got. Yeah. I'm making notes on various things. Mm. <laughs> um, yeah. You can get behind the screen on Tabletop Weekly. <laughs> yeah. Nice. So, there is a dull silence. There is not much noise. The occasional uh, rumble and stones falling from the loose ceiling. Um, you can hear faint sobbing or kind of that choking noise coming from Scout as he's just kind of holding Tracker close. Uh, Chipper has moved over to him and is just kneeling down very quietly next to their old friend. Um, and you begin to hear kind of a very faint speaking Tracker is saying something to them, but unless you're next door, next to them, you wouldn't hear it. Um, yeah, and it's just silence. Sentry, Nova, what, what, what happened? I saw a huge amount of necromatic power in here. Was, were they, was he trying to siphon from, from, from you, from, from Scar, from anyone? You can see a, a kind of human beside Sentry on the ground. Um, he was trying to siphon power from the Ashbringer. Ashbringer? Yeah. And he was going to use that he to... He was going to kill him. To save... To save Tracker. But so that means that the reason that Breeze is alive is because he's been killing people. Well, yeah, well, I believe so, yeah. Unless he found a, a magical place, you know, it's not always a person, is it? That's true. However, yes, uh, we just almost saw a man get sucked into a robot. I'm so, I'm so sorry. I, why are you sorry? <laughs> but tr Tracker. Sandry, none of that is your fault. You're not responsible for someone being a weird, creepy, necromancy-wielding... Necromantic. ...murderer thing. I know, but... Sandry, it's not your fault. Thank you. There is a sound of grating stone. You see a section of the wall tucked behind one of the statues of Kalara, where the echoes had been hiding is pulled free and a, a, a light from a lantern shines in um, and you hear a, 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 a voice. I don't know who's in there, but whatever the hell's going on, uh, just prepare yourselves. And you kind of hear this faint and as a part of the stone door opens um, and you see a man dressed in black robes carrying a lantern uh, with a silver star on the top. Okay. Behind him is a half-elf woman She's wearing um, a padded gambeson, and you can see she's clutching a two-handed greatsword. Um, they look very young. They look like maybe 17, 18, the two of them. Um, and the man kind of like lingers in. He's like, who's there? What the? He's just glancing around like. Uh, there's, there's a few of us already in here, but we, we stopped what was happening in here. You see the stone door is pushed open by the woman, kind of tensing with a kind of athletic arm. And she kind of looks around like, what the bloody hell was it that was going on in here? A, a guardian just evaporated into the main temple above and then ran off out the door. I've never even seen him before. You might want to call the authorities and get him seized. Well, they just looked over. He's long gone now. We heard noises coming from the crypt below. He dashed off. I got a, a hit on him, but he just kept running. And I was, wasn't going to leave Varen here alone. Wh who are you people? Who's this man? And they point down, like, who's he? Why is he injured? That's a good question. Who is um, can I I'm going to let whisper... you do the talking because I'll mess it up real bad. <laughs> can I whisper... Remember to stage whisper. Yeah. I'm going to mess it up real bad if I talk. So okay. can I whisper to the group, like, don't talk about the ritual? Are you actually using the spell message or are you... No, no, no. You're no, just no, whispering? Just whisper, okay. like, don't, don't talk about the ritual. I'll say that to... Okay. The, uh, the, the man with the lantern... Ritual? Like he hears a word. He doesn't hear the whole thing, he just goes like, Ritual, what are you talking about? Well, we believe that uh, we caught wind of this, uh, this guardian, who seemed a little bit suspicious, so we followed him down here, and it turns out he held this Ashbringer captive and was doing something untoward with his body. Ashbringer? <laughs> one, of, one, of those, one of those fanatics from the Abbey? Yes. Mm -hmm. You and see the two of them kind of share a glance, like, how do we... Oh, I he can wish the rest keeper was here. And you can see he's kind of nervously looking around. Seems very uncertain. But we chose to step in and stop him. 
That's good, but I've only really got your word. Maybe y'all were trying to do something to this fella here, and how about you ask him? All right, I guess. You can step back. Okay, and he kind of looks around. He's like, Jayla, can you, are you sure you, is this all right? And she's just like, she, the half-elf girl kind of looks at him. She's like, honestly, Varen, if these, if these lot try to attack us, I'm not sure I can hold them off. Uh, I have put my hammer on the floor. She kind of nods and is like, thank you. Uh, she looks around and she's like, all right, stand back. You guardians, and you can see the other three, uh, Scout kind of looks up. He's like, Please, just don't, don't make us move away from him. We're saying goodbye. And there's this kind of quiet moment. Do you want to see Tracker? Yeah. We can handle the rest of this. Okay, yeah, I'll go see Tracker. Mm -hmm. Okay, when you go over to Tracker, you can see that um, he's whispering something to Chipper, who's like leaning down close to him. The kind of metallic form is reflecting the light from this lantern. But Tracker is, the eyes and the matrix is dulling in color more and more. You can see the color fading from it completely. And then as you kind of approach him, he kind of just puts a hand out weakly, kind of touches your form. He's just like, it's all right. It's all right, Sentry. This is better this way. At least get chance. Goodbye. I'm sorry, Tracker. I'm so sorry. Don't need Prime. Fine. Prime. And then blackness washes over him. Uh, as this is going on, you see the young priest, uh, tiny scruff of the goatee beard, very dark bags under his eyes. He doesn't look like he's slept in days, um, or at least a day. And he kind of like puts the lantern down, heads over towards the young man on the ground, looks at him, waves his hand over a couple of times, prods him. I think he's been poisoned or something. Uh, give me a second. He spends about a few minutes casting some sort of spell. Yeah, some sort of poison, uh, paralysis. It'll take him a bit of time to come out of this. I, I don't have the materials to purge it from his system. Um, kind of looks down, checks his arms, and you can see the brand of this closed fist on fire. It's just like the one, just like the others. He really is one of them. All right. Well, I'm going to take it that that means he's up to no good, so I ain't exactly suspicious of any of y'all right now. Have you had run-ins with the Ashbringers before? Yeah. Yeah, they came the other night when the temple of Hesper burned down. They came and they took uh, the rest keeper away, Jasna. She was uh, the, the priestess here. She was my mentor. Um, they took her away. Nothing violent, but I could tell in their eyes that they were up to something. Uh, Jasna went with them, not wanting them to cause any trouble for me or the others. And she's now being held <coughs> in. Well, we've had a written letter from her saying that she's there by choice and she's engaging in these talks, discussions. I'm not sure how much of that I believe. Um, my name's Varen. I'm an acolyte here at the temple. I heard noises. I, I went and fetched Jayla. She's a squire to the Knights of the Black and Rose. And we came down here, and that's when that guardian... Who was he? Why was he running? He was the, uh, some sort of necromancer or something? Something like that. Uh... And you can see the half-elf woman stiffens. I should have gone after him, Varen. It's like, no, you were doing the right thing. We didn't know what was going on. Well, this is, I don't know if you know much, but we're very strongly against that sort of thing, the Temple of Kalara. So uh, any information we can take from you in the Rest Keeper's absence, um, we'll start to investigate the matter. Yeah, he was probably a guardian that went feral, honestly. All right, I don't think I've ever encountered, I've heard of guardians happening. Sorry, God, I didn't mean to say that in front of you. It's okay. <laughs> the F word. He was well beyond his age. Scout yeah. looks up and he's like, he weren't, he, he wasn't feral. There is no way I've seen, that's not how guardians are. He was lucid. He, he was arguing with Sentry. He knew what he was saying. Yep. That too. Well, there's just this, this unease that you can sense in the room. 
these two priests, or this priest and this squire, don't really know what to make of the situation. Um, they can tell that obviously something tragic has happened. They can see the, the, the four guardians kind of huddled together. Um, and this Ashbringer is just eyes wide, scanning around the room, unable to move or speak. So what do we do with the Ashbringer then? Uh, we can take him up into the temple, uh, put him in a quarters, keep him secured for now. It'll take me some time to prepare the ritual to purge the poison from him. Um, well, that's better than letting him go and doing whatever else he's up to. I mean, I'm, as far as I'm aware, uh, we need to get the Harvest Guard, get Malika or someone involved. This is a little beyond us, but if there's necromancy involved, then I don't want to let him or, well, any of, any of this get out. So, sorry. I'm going to have to ask you all to stay here for the time being. If you're willing, that is. Well... Safer down here. Yeah. Honestly. You can stay up in the temple. I wouldn't expect you. This is. You shouldn't even be down here. This is a. This is a, a holy place for preparing bodies. This. How did you even get in here? There's well, a big old tunnel there. Yeah. Sorry. The old tunnel. That. That's like a mile outside the city. Mm, quite a trek. Nobody's supposed to know about that except the priesthood. That guardian did yeah. somehow. Yeah, we came. We just followed him oh, down. Oh, by the, by the cradle! What is going on? You can see, he kind of like rubs his forehead a little bit, and the half of woman puts a hand on his shoulder. It's like it's all right, Varen. We'll deal with this. Come upstairs. We'll find you some bunks in the acolytes' quarters. A few of them aren't here at the moment, so you can at least get some rest. Um, you tried to stop what was happening here, yes? Well, we we did. Yeah. yeah. The Ashbring is still alive. Good. Well, in that case, I'm willing to trust you. As a knight, it's my responsibility to prevent this sort of thing happening, and if you've done that, then you have my thanks. I met one of you guys on the road, actually. <sighs> I'm pretty sure we Was it Master did. Demos? Was it Eben? Eben? Yeah, yeah. Oh, Master yeah. Eben, yes. No, not Demos. Demos is the bad guy that you yeah. fought. Eben. Mm. Master Ebon. Yes, Master Eben. <coughs> yes, that's, uh, he's one of the, the masters in this area. Well, good. If you've met him and he didn't strike you down, then I don't suspect you are guilty of necromancy or meddling with the undead, so... Pass the test. Well, not to well, be we'll see. threatening or anything, but had we been performing necromancy under your temple, do you think we would have defended those secrets? <laughs> A good point, yes, considering there's only the two of us here. I Still, frankly don't want any more bloodshed. No, let's try and faint as that. is. Um, what about your guardian friend? And she gestures to Tracker, who is now lifeless. We have never really... I don't know what the rights for guardians are, what you do with their bodies. But you're welcome to leave him here for now. This is a holy place, at least. It's warded against creatures being raised as undead. The scout? I'll stay with him. Yeah, Chip sure. is like, me too. We'll stay down here. I'm just gonna put my hand up and, I guess, ask the guardians. Um, I don't know if this will work, but do you mind if I cast a little ritual on Tracker? See, Scout defensively kind of put his hand. Yeah, and I kind of, I want to position myself so the two, uh, Varen and Jayla don't mm. hear. I mean, they can listen if they want. But yeah, I mean, they're going to try to. because they just want to make it difficult for them. Okay, But I want to yep. be like, I want to see if I can identify what the spell was. Yeah. I don't know if this will work. Okay. And I'm, I'll say, I appeal to Scout and just like... Okay. He's like, oh, all right. And he kind of like takes a hand away from Tracker. Um, but you can see he's wary. You can see Tracker is uncertain. Uh, Scout is upset and the idea of more magic being cast on his friend he's uncomfortable with but he trusts you like mm. he, he knows that you guys are there to help so he kind of but he stays close mm. um. so i don't know if this will work this is out of mm -hmm. character i don't know if this will work yeah but i don't know if you want to read the word well, you read it read it out for me so identify uh, the spell is identify and you choose an object to touch but it says throughout the casting of a spell so i don't know if i don't know if this will work at all because well, it I says thought, an object 
But then it also says if you touch a creature throughout the casting, you can learn what spells, if any, are currently affecting it. Okay, yeah. But I so it's during the casting of Identify, it means, not the casting oh, okay. of another spell. So, so, you cast, so you touch Tracker and throughout the casting. So it says in which way for a creature, yeah. you learn what spells, if any, are currently affecting it. Okay. Could Identify be used on the ritual circle itself? You could try. Yeah, what it says, if it is a magic item or other magic imbued object, you learn its properties and how to use them, whether it requires attunement to use, how many charges it has, if any. Yeah. You learn Again. whether any spells are affecting the item and what they are. You can try. I'm not going to give you a hard and fast answers, yeah. but if you want to try it, so are you trying on tracker or are you trying on the ritual slot? I want to try on tracker. Okay. All right, so you're going to try on tracker. Are you casting it as a ritual or are you casting it as just a spell slot? Uh, ritual. So it'll take 10 minutes if it's a ritual. Yeah, a ritual. Okay. Um, so <coughs> you kind of kneel down, and the whole process of casting is you have to gesture with your hands and you have to say incantations. And when you begin, the two, the priest and the squire, are instantly like, hey, what are you doing? Like, they don't know what you're doing, so they're, you can see that she brings the sword. I believe she's trying to figure out what happened to him. There was a spell cast on him, which caused him to uh, perish, and she's trying to figure out what it was. All right. Why didn't you just say that instead of just doing it? No, we just figured it out ourselves. She had the process in her brain. Okay. Give me a persuasion check. Yes. Just, just take that. Just take that. No, he's going to use his dice. <laughs> Those are my dice. <laughs> Ten plus probably two. Persuasion. You know, I think Lucius has got more than that. Five. Yeah. Fifteen. Wow. Fifteen. Fifteen. Okay. He's like, all right. Just be careful. Um, yeah, you begin casting the spell. You begin weaving your magic, channeling it through Tiangong, this blade, this dagger, this focus that you have. Do you get a sense that there was a spell? It's gone now. You're kind of getting the echoes of it. There is no spell currently affecting his body, but there was magic for a be it for a time. Heavy necromatic presence. The name of it, you don't know. Um, it is a, you get the sense that it was something that would transfer magical energy, uh, that it was, uh, it was feeding magical energy into his matrix. Um, but that's all you can really get, because it's literally just the echoes fading yeah. from his body, because the spell is no longer affecting him, so, mm. um, mm. yeah. Okay. Anything else? Is there any point casting it on the Ashbringer? Well, I know you can cast Identify. Uh, I can. Um, so, we just know that he's been poisoned. Um, I could try it. I, could, I guess I would probably do it at the same time. Yeah, you um, could try it. Were you ritual casting it? Ritual casting, so okay. 10 minutes, yeah. Yep. Um, so, you, there is no magical spell affecting him, but you get the same thing as, as Nova, in that you see the echoes that a spell was affecting him. Yeah. And it was... You get the sense that actually this individual can cast magic. He has innate magic, maybe similar to what you felt off Lucius, so indicating he's some sort of sorcerer. Yeah. Um, and his his own reserve of spell power is gone. Right. Whatever spell power he had has been drained out of him. Like his spell slots have been drained. Yeah. Um, but um, you get the sense of yeah, this kind of like transference of magical energy. Well, I can see why this one was picked at the very least. His magical energies is completely exhausted. So whatever this spell was, was draining like we expected. Has completely drained his magical energies to transfer, I assume, to Tracker. Yeah. Mm. Um, and I'd say as well with the Identify, just make a quick Arcana check for me, just to see how much information you can drag out. 17. 17. So, it wasn't just like, obviously it drained his magical power, but also it, that wasn't obviously enough, and it was the very magic of life itself, like the kind of the reverse of, of healing magic, necromancy. Yeah. It was literally sucking his life out as additional power. Um, so it took all of his magical energy and then it started draining his life, his soul, his sentience, all of these things. Oh, I see. So would I know if, if he had a, a load of magical energy? It might not have killed him. I see. Um, Interesting. But the, the level of which, you have no idea. Yeah. Yeah. This is, this is magic fun. none of you have ever experienced before. My little head chat with Night Frost. Sure, yeah. Oh, yes, Master Lucian. So you saw this 
traumatic experience. I did. Pretty bad. It reminded me of what happened to myself. Yes, I was going to ask. If we were to reverse that procedure and we were to utilize your power and through you imbue someone like Sentry and using me as a vessel with life through the matrix, how would that work? Night Frost, you feel this apprehension and terror begin to swell up almost in the back of your skull where his voice kind of sits. Master Lucius, no, I, you should not do this. They, I killed those girls. They, I, I drained them of their life. I, what if I do the same to you? What, what if I cannot stop myself? What if, what if I drain too much? and harm you or kill you like I did them. No, no, you cannot oh, do this. I, 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 the other way around, I'd be utilizing your power and giving that to someone else. To drain me? Yes. That is possible, though I do not know the nature of the ritual. You would need to learn whatever spell this breeze was using. It mm. seems to be a ritual that transfers power between magical beings or objects. But in theory, I imagine that I would, I would fulfill the requirements instead of this Ashbringer or this other form. And you probably wouldn't perish, because you're quite powerful. But we don't know. I do not know, Master Lucius. But perhaps you are right. Food for thought. Indeed. If I can help Lady Sentry, I would be glad to do so. Why, why did Breeze pick this Ashbringer? We all have magical energies of some variety, maybe not Ayla, no offense, but we all, he could have drained it from me, from Lucius, from any of us. He didn't know us. He didn't know you were there, no. He did, I think he did. And also, I think he wanted someone less in the limelight, so to speak. When he was... Would draw attention to him. When he was talking to Sentry, he explained that that this boy was a sorcerer and that he had done terrible things as an Ashbringer and that he was less than Breeze and the Guardians and didn't deserve to live when they die. So he's deciding who's bad and who's good, and he's taking those bad people who are magical to fuel his own life and other Guardians' lives. He said it was a waste. It was a waste that people like the Ashbringer have these powers when people like the Guardians have a short lifespan and have to die. And did he have proof about this particular Ashbringer? He said he saw the Ashbringer attacking the Centaur. Yeah, he was gonna attack the Shadow. <coughs> Maybe he was right. No, Sentry. Nothing's worth. I think y'all need some rest, if nothing else. I don't know what has gone on here, and it sounds like this is bigger than just what I've stumbled into, but I know people who are hurting, and it seems like there's a few of you who are in that place, so come, you should rest, if nothing else. This is not a place for... Uh, these kind of affairs. This is meant to be a place to say goodbye and, and to dispel your sadness. So please, come along. And he just offers a hand out to Sentry. He kind of like takes, you know, takes your hand and leads you to the secret door that leads. There's like a winding stone staircase that seems to lead up. Um, Lucius has a fleeting thought, really inappropriate. Yeah. But he's wondering if this guy has a moat for spell clash. <laughs> okay. Uh, you don't know? <laughs> you don't know. And that's it. Uh, it's like, how dare I think that? How dare I? <laughs> At least you didn't say it out loud. <laughs> no, I kept it. So, <laughs> I think as we head up, mm. kind of like catch eyes with Sentry and then immediately like look away. <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> um, Jayla, the half elf squire, basically goes to pick up the body of the guy, but she's like kind of like, <laughs> like dragging him a little bit and is like, I can, I get it. Are you sure? Should we take him together? You get his head, I'll take his legs. Yeah, if he accidentally bumps into things on the way, that's not my fault. She kind of looks. He's a bad guy. And there's like a look of like, hmm. She kind of smiles and smirks and she's like, okay, she grabs his legs, you grab his head, and you carry him up the stairs. Whoops, mind the door. <laughs> there's no noise, he can't speak, so it's just like. <laughs> Makes it even um, better. 
and she brings him upstairs. Uh, Varen will show you to there's uh, like small monks' quarters. This temple is pretty small, so there's maybe only like two of them. Um, there's a single bed, but there's room for a bedroll to go on the floor as well. Um, it's quite late, by the way. It's like 1 a.m. Um, it's dark. And there is no sound of rain outside, but it is very dark, a clouded sky. Um, so yeah, if you guys want to take a long rest, you can do so. If you want to remain awake. Sweet. I, I'll take the floor with the bedroll. Mm -hmm. I'll trance it for four hours. Yeah, I mean, there's also things like yeah. there is technically the main temple where there are pews, um, and Varen's happy for you to go and sleep in there and things like that if it's more comfortable. Um, hmm. Okay. Um, would a long rest get rid of my poison condition? Yes, it does. Yeah. That technically, I think, would have gone away at the end of the battle. Oh, okay. Um, okay, so everyone's taking a long rest? Okay, mm -hmm. you can all take a long rest. Quill! Uh oh. <laughs> uh oh. Erois seems to stretch out before you. Great continents and seas seen from an impossible viewpoint. Bright blue and clear, you know you must be very high to see the world as you do now. You're stood on an outcropping of rock that you can't see what's behind you. It's covered in a thick, comfortable moss and sat on the edge of the rock, robed legs dangling over onto an impossibly high world below. You see a man, angelic wings folded behind him, and a golden staff just laying on the ground next to him, radiating with such magical power you almost cannot bear it. He turns with a very human face, but bright blue glowing eyes. Hello, Quillick. Seems you've been having a tough time of late. You could say that, Hesper. Um, he just pats the rocky outcropping beside him. It's quite the view. Come sit with me. Well, firstly, what would you have done? Yeah, I know that you have... I, I'm not omnipotent, Quill. I know that you have been troubled, but I don't know the exact situation. Describe it to me and I'll be had to, glad to answer. So, a friend of ours was on his way out. And someone had come along with the idea to replenish his life, but use the energies of someone who is, without a doubt, bad. Mm. And we interfered. We stopped it, saved this, this man's life, but mm. doomed our friend. Is that right? Is that, is, is that the right path? He smiles. Come sit with me. He just gestures. In terms of what's right, I'm not here to tell you that, Quillek. I am not a god of good or bad. I'm not here to provide you with your moral path. That's your choice. I am very proud of you to ask that question, however, because that's ultimately what I represent, is those questions that go unanswered, the questions that need to be asked. There are probably things you could have learned from such a ritual, but there are also maybe things that you, can, you could have learned from the person who was alive. There are things that you can learn from the person who has survived, this evil person. Right. The Ashbringer. I've heard the name, and I've sensed that something is going on near where you are. I want you to know something. It's not my brother's doing. Palador is not that person. He's a defender of this world. And he would not condone the sorts of things that I can feel from you. So whatever is going on, it's something else. What should I do? <laughs> That's the question, isn't it? <laughs> That's the question. What do you think you should do? I mean... We've gone from town to town. And it feels like this path... Mm. I'm only losing. I've lost the wing, I've lost my eye, I've lost friends. I've lost trust in people all across Aroas. Mm. What, what have you gained? You've, you've lost, I know that. But you've gained too. I, you've gained allies. I've gained allies. You've gained knowledge. True. And ultimately, that is what life is. It's a journey. It's paths of loss and pain 
kind of learning and experience, and of those fleeting joys, things that we can cherish, the things that we suffer in exchange for. It's not an easy answer, I know, but I'm not here to just give you the answers. I wouldn't be a very good god of knowledge if I just told you everything, would I? True. <clears throat> it's ideal, though. I know. It's tricky. At the very least, is it close to the right path? <laughs> yes. I can't tell you what your path is exactly, but you are walking it. I guess, think of it this way. Do you think that I created the Aarakocra to just be messengers, to cart parcels across Erois? Do you think that I just gave them wings because all I wanted was them was to fly? I could have given any race on Erois wings, Quill. I could have made the elves fly, I could have made the dwarves fly, but I created the Aarakocra because of more than that. I gave them my curiosity, the willingness to explore. You're not an Aarakocra because you can fly. You're an Aarakocra for many things. It's why I chose you. When that lightning hit you, I saw you for the first time, and I saw a curious explorer Somebody who would not be afraid to walk the paths that were set before them. And I saw somebody who would ask the right questions. And that's why you're on, that's why you're where you are now. When you wake up, remember, ask the right questions. And then something else begins to happen. Okay. Hesper seems not to notice <coughs> this. Your vision changes. The world is no longer the high continents of Erois, but instead it's like you're on a rooftop looking down at Kaylee's rest. And it begins to burn. Flames begin erupting around. The buildings are light. You see shapes, creatures made of shadow and ash clawing around. You begin to hear screams and then Above it all, a great door of fire and light. And at its center, a woman wrapped in chains. Hesper just doesn't seem to notice. Hesper? Yes? You, is this another message? <laughs> Looks around, he's like, no, what are you seeing? There's dark creatures, there's fire. This is not my doing, this must be something nearby. I'm sorry, Quill, I only have a short time. Ask the questions, and then uh, it just fades away into flames and soot and ash. Okay. And you wake. Uh, everybody else, <laughs> you get a long rest. <laughs> Your dreams can be as you dictate them. Uh, they are, whether they are things that plague on your minds, worries, fears, doubts, regrets, curious questions about things and the nature of the world, or simply where you're going to find your own answers. You wake up in a small, cloistered, uh, cold temple <coughs> of the goddess of death, Kelara. Um, there are not many people here. It seems to be Varen, Jella, uh, and perhaps a few other acolytes that go about normal business, but nobody else is around. Uh, Varen brings you uh, a porridge, kind of a bowl of porridge and some water. Um, I should let you know I completed the rituals. The Ashbringer is secure, but uh, he's awake and able to speak. I thought it best if uh, we all questioned them together, so. I have not asked anything so far. Uh, hope you're all well. Slept like a log. Good. Good sleep. I'll give you some time to eat, and then uh, we're just in the back room. It's um, a small Buddy. preparation meditation <laughs> chamber. So. Where do we find some food? I'm afraid that that's all the temple has to oh, offer. Oh, this is so. food. Oh, sorry. I thought it was feed for I mean, you're welcome to, I can send somebody to go and fetch you something else, but it's all we have here. No, no, this is fine. 
I mean, it doesn't taste bad. It tastes good. It's like a nice sugary porridge. But Didn't know what porridge was. Yeah, it's it's oh, it's kind of got a <laughs> strange con uh, mixture and consistency, but it's quite sweet, milky. A um, little bit of honey in there probably as well. So it's very sweet, uh, very thick. Coat your stomach. What well. is this? It's a porridge. Hmm. Fascinating. It's oats, is milk, it something that honey. priests have. Oh, it's uh, just it's very cheap. Uh, oh, we, we use a little right. honey from the local farmers. Um, I see, it's delightful. Thank you. All right. Well, my apologies. I've not met, met many uh, folks from the sky cities before. Uh, I'm you sure you it? must be used to <laughs> better fare, but that's all we have. This is perfect. Thank you. He um, thought a cow was a zombie. It's best not to question it. So I shouldn't tell him that the milk comes from... No, I wouldn't. All right. <laughs> it's a touchy subject. Okay. He's like, well, I'll be out in the meditation chamber when you need me and Jala. And he heads off and leaves uh, you guys. Is the Ashbringer at least secured? Yes. Yes. Uh, Jayla found some manacles. Um, okay. She's chained them up. Um, I guess separate to Sentry, I'll like say to uh, Ayla, how do we feel about Sentry going in there to talk to... The Ashbringer. How do we feel about that? Well, I think ab think about it. I, I, is she going to? I think Sentry just feels a bit bad just now. Right. I'm assuming you like happening. have this conversation yeah, wait, in a corridor or something yeah. like that. But I don't. <laughs> You're watching Lucius eat porridge. <laughs> this is a very warm bowl. <laughs> I don't think it's healthy for us to Take it. Oh, avoid the topic. Oh, it's nice. I know. I'm just. Mm. You know. We can ask if she wants to. Sure, 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 sure. But I think it's going to come up eventually regardless and it might be better to just face the problem and then she can get past it faster. Okay. Rather than dwelling on it. Okay, okay, good, sure. Yeah? I mean, Tracker kind of... Yep, he's, he's... yep. Okay, sure. Yep, okay. I don't think we should maybe talk about him. I think let's just focus on this man and how Breeze got to him, etc. Right. That side of things, maybe not focusing on the Guardian side. Sure. For now. Okay, that's good. Maybe. Just making sure. Again, probably going to mess it up. Not good with delicate matters. Might be best if you speak to her. Maybe I should have had this conversation with someone else and asked. Probably. Maybe <coughs> how do you feel about Ayla going in there? That's a far better question. Are you going to kill him? No! Depends what he says. Meanwhile, in the room, Sentry, Lucius, Nova, uh, is there anything you guys want to talk about? Farm With business? the warm bowl as an entry point. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I warm like you. it. Are you feeling okay, Sentry? Uh, I don't know, Lucius, I don't know. Uh, Tracker, Tracker said he wanted it right. And I stopped it, and I, f I feel like I killed him. No, that was very much I his, it was the end of his life, was it not? That's natural. He wanted that. <sighs> and to m take that decision away from him would not be fair, would it? You did what he wanted. And you stopped a bad, bad bot doing bad things. But I let a bad person do other bad things. What if he goes out of this and, I don't know, burns something down or Sentry, hurts someone? You said it yourself when you stood up to Breeze. You said you couldn't let him do it because it's not his place to decide. You said that, that yes, this Ashbringer may be bad now, but to take his way is life means he doesn't have a chance to grow and change and become good and do things for good. Just because he's bad now doesn't mean there's no opportunity for him to atone. But if you take his life away, then there's nothing. I'm not saying it was an easy decision. I'm not saying there's a line, this is good, this is bad, and that there is a line here because this is a really messed up situation, I'll be honest. I don't think any of us really knows what is right and wrong. But you stopped 
someone dying that didn't have a voice and didn't have a choice in this. And Breeze, I mean, he said it himself. These people are less than us. Is that right? If someone is less than you, is it right that you get to choose who lives and who dies? I don't know. I don't know what the right answer is. Yeah. Tracker, he said Tracker would have changed yeah. as well. He wouldn't have been Tracker. That's true, yes. We're all going on the impression that Breeze would have just given him more life and it would have been all rosy and peachy. Tracker could have changed. That dark energy, that necromantic power going into Tracker, who knows what could have happened. So let's not assume. Yeah. Let's just go with the facts, what actually happened, and you saved a life. I feel and like it was selfish of me. Was it, though? Selfish of Breeze. I feel like I put myself before anyone else. I, thought, I felt like I put my beliefs ahead of everybody else's. And You also said that dying is a part of living. It's natural. Daddy once said, death is what gives us purpose. And I don't know what that means, but I think that's appropriate right now. I could use a bit more purpose. <laughs> hey, you've got some. You've got to keep us alive. It's true. Are you going to have that porridge? Because um... I was going to say, I think like, that's probably when you guys finish <coughs> and rejoin. Yeah, yeah. We're okay. all back in now. Yeah. Okay. So is the plan to go see with everyone? Go interrogate your prisoner? I guess so. Yeah, I mean, if you guys don't want to do that, then that's, that's the time to say, or if you want to say, where do you want to go? <laughs> so, about the Ashbringer, we should probably find out more from him. Apparently he came to, or not him, but Ashbringers came here to try and get the priest. It sounds like Ashbringers went to all of the places to try and get the priests, even though that's not what we were told earlier. Yeah. Brookstone! When we were Brookstone. <laughs> um, I wonder if the Ashbringers know that one's missing and if they're looking for him. Probably. I mean, that's now four or five or six of them that are missing because of us. Yep. Um, the Abbotess knows about that, though. True. Brookstone. I think it might be good for you, Sentry, to maybe see this person. Just yeah. Maybe we should go with or someone go with? Yep. I like yeah. to go as well. Me too. Yeah. Group I don't really effort. Want to see him, but okay. I'll go if the team wants me there. We may as well all be there. <laughs> okay, for um, century. Yeah. Okay. At least make sure he's okay. You just make your way through this very. The Temple of Kalara is plain stone. It's very pragmatic. There's not much, uh, you know, gilded chalices or anything like that here. It is very gently lit. Uh, there are very thin slit windows, so not a lot of natural light comes in. It's kept in this very gloomy, starlit kind of period, even in the mornings. Um, you can see that there is a large stained glass window in the main chapel that depicts uh, the goddess herself clad <coughs> in black breastplate with a mantle of dead flowers, um, raven black hair carrying a great sword, lifting up a body, uh, carrying her lantern, sorry, carrying a body up towards the cradle beyond into the afterlife. You make your way out into a back room through heavy wooden fortified doors, through some small corridors, and Varen leads you to a small, what must be some sort of like meditation chamber, like a priest's prayer chamber, and uh, manacled to a column, like a stone column, his arms kind of wrapped around it, is the man that you saw last night. Uh, Wilden was what Will, uh, Breeze called him, Wilden Baker. And he's awake, he's kind of sat on the floor with his arms, he's basically like hugging uh, the column itself. Um, and he's kind of groggy, but he looks around. Um, Jella is watching him, arms folded, just kind of keeping an eye on him. And when you enter, his eyes, he kind of blinks a few times. And on seeing Sentry, he's like, you're the one, uh, you're the one, you're the one who, who stopped him. You stopped that crazy guardian. Yeah. Uh, how, kinda, how are you feeling? Better. Better a little. I slept. Uh, the, the priest here healed me a little. Um, it was weird. It was... I felt cold. Uh, like I'd never be warm again. Uh, 
uh, like uh, like all the light in me had been sucked away. I, I don't know what that guy was doing to me, but it wasn't no good. I guess I, I guess thank you for saving me. You know, I. He just kind of looks around and he's looking at the rest of you, and there's you get this sense that there's just this incredible uncomfortableness, and he's just like, this is why I guess. I don't know anymore. And he just kind of like slumps his head and like rests it against the stone column. It's like, ah, by the flames, I don't even know. Uh, thank you, I guess, for saving me. It's okay. Do you remember what happened before you were taken or when you were taken? Yeah, I remember. I was, um, I was on the streets. He grabbed me. Uh, he threw something in my face, made me sleep. And you were wearing this outfit just on the streets? He kind of looks over, it's like, yeah. I was, um, I was supposed to do something for the church, but uh, I had my own business to attend to. A friend of mine swapped with me. He went in my place. Under Abbotess orders? He just doesn't say anything. What, what church business was that? We were meant to go and uh, ask some of the other faith leaders to go up to the abbey. They wanted to have a meeting about problems in Savona. When you say ask, you mean just take them anyway, right? He just shakes his head. He's like, uh, we were just told to ask going to walk in and put my hammer on the ground in front of him. <laughs> okay, you can make an intimidate check if you want. You can use strength instead of charisma because you're trying to intimidate him with force. 19. You're like, just he's like, look, I heard about you a lot. You're the ones that were at the Temple of Hesper. You know, it wasn't necessarily meant to be like that. We were certainly told to not take no for an answer, but they never said anything about burning anything down. I mean, Mason, the old man, he's got a lot of other people around him. I wouldn't want them to get hurt. You know, a lot of them are Savonans. They, they belong here. I didn't want them to get hurt. Just, I guess, maybe because you guys were up at the old kook's house, uh, temp, uh, Hesper Dean. There's nobody around him, I guess. Maybe they just thought they could get away with it, but it wasn't supposed to be like that anyway. And like I said, I never ended up going. I had my own business. Okay. Yes. Harassing a centaur, right? And you see, he kind of like winces. It's like, yeah. Yeah, I guess so. A nice detour. Wait, that was him? Mm-hmm. We got told that, yeah. He just, I, I he just, told that. <laughs> he just goes silent. I was in the room. Yeah. Um, Nova told us that. Uh, Nova did tell you, like, just now. Oh, did you? <laughs> like yeah, literally earlier, us, like um, an hour when ago. We were in the I mean, you had a very har harrowing dream. Yeah. Let's put it out <laughs> yeah. We'll let it go. Yeah. Yeah, he just looks, and he's looking at Sentry, like, you can, I mean, I think that most of you, especially, I think, Quill, your passive insight would be pretty high anyway, because you've got wisdom. 13. <laughs> 13. Is it 13? Yeah, oh, yeah investigation good. and perception are super high. Yeah, that's mind. it. Um, yeah, I mean, you can easily pick up that this guy is constantly glancing at Sentry, and whenever he sees Sentry, you see his resolve break a little bit, like, I owe this woman my life. And so he kind of feels obliged to answer questions, but he's not being very forthcoming with stuff. Mm. So what, what now? You're just gonna leave me tied up here? I mean, I appreciate you saving my life, but I'm guessing you ain't just gonna let me go. Well, what are you gonna do after this? I don't know. I was thinking of going back to the temple, but back to the abbey rather. I guess maybe you guys have given me something to think about. It's not that I'm... I don't regret what I was doing. I got my reasons. But maybe, I don't know, if you if, if you hadn't been there, who knows what would have happened to me. What are your reasons? <laughs> you don't want to know. You don't care. You just think that I'm some hateful asshole. Well, I do care. It's... Do you think that this... Wonderful guardian would have saved your life if she didn't care a little bit. You're lucky that she's a good person. 
Yeah, well, maybe those guardians are better than the rest of you foreigners. Maybe they're not so bad, except that one that tried to kill me. Look, that centaur, she, she. My dad used to own an alchemist shop. He used to be a herbalist. He used to be the big shop in town. Everybody used to come around. We had a good life. And then out of nowhere, she just walks in. Druidic magic, gifted, knows plants like better than any of us do. Not even from around here. We offer her a job. Said that she can come work with us, but she turns us down. Says she wants to do things her own way. That she doesn't trust us. We figured out. She's, what's one weirdo going to do? Left her to it, but she's gifted. She knows things even we don't know. Even my dad didn't know. She starts making money. Starts doing well. I mean, we're still doing okay, but... But then my powers, my magic. I burnt down a bunch of stuff that we needed. Ingredients. I couldn't control it. It just happened. We lost everything, and I went to her and I begged. I knew that she could heal plants, that she could restore stuff. She lied. She said she couldn't do it. Said that it was beyond her powers. She was lying. I hated her for that. My old, we lost everything. My dad, he couldn't take it. He, he left and died a few months later. I hated her. And then I started going to the Abbey. I met the Abbotess and a few of the others, the Forge Flamer and the Flame Forger and some of the others. And they started telling me it was her fault. That, she, that it was all of these people coming in, people like wild elves killing our families or, uh, you know, orcs coming in and stealing our trade. I guess I believed them for a bit. That's what they were teaching you? Some of them were, yeah. The old abbot, he used to try and tell me otherwise, told me that it wasn't her fault, that, that my magic wasn't to blame either, that it was just the way of things, but that wasn't an easy answer. And then he got sick and he stopped talking to people anymore. And I just, I don't know, I just thought, I was so angry, I just wanted her to suffer. I was going to burn a shop down like I burn away my own. Seems like this abbotess wants, wants you to hate people. Yeah. But it's not like, it's not that she just, you know, makes us hate you for no reason, you know? She plays on things. We've lost a lot. Savona's had a lot of problems. The War of the Three Sisters and then loads of people coming in. The land's fertile. It's got a lot of resources and people are coming from all over a row to exploit it, you know? And... Then we get the wild elves. They were getting more and more aggressive. People have lost families. They've lost homes. You know, they kill people just for the sake of it. They just come in, take what they want, kill it, who any, who, anybody who gets in their way. They don't want to talk to us. They don't want to deal. And then there's the others, the other foreigners, people from the sky cities, just holding us over a barrel through trade, you know? It just makes people mad. This used to be our world, this used to be our domain, you know, back before the Sundering, this was, this was a land of, it was a good land for good people, working hard. It's just, a lot of people are angry, you know. I get it. So yeah. So no, I ain't, I ain't a nice guy, alright? Maybe I'm a pretty bad guy. I thought of killing that centaur, but I guess maybe now... Maybe since you saved my ass, I'm starting to think maybe that was wrong. We've all lost things. We're all trying to get back to where we came from and... Yeah, but look at you. Look at all of you. You're a warrior and you got a, a rich boy over here and some... I don't know what you are. And, and these two. I was nobody. I, I'm the son of a herbalist. I didn't... With magic, you couldn't control, you know? It's not like I could just wander off and start, you know, traveling town to town. Why I got, not? I got brothers, I got people here. Um, I didn't know how to control my stuff, my magic. I, um, my mom's a cafe owner and my dad's a teacher. I have a sister and a brother. I don't really come from anything. I, I know, like, you're probably not going to listen to me, but there's nothing really special about me. 
I just decided to travel because I wanted to see the world and learn more. I I just have never I've never been outside of Kaylee's Rest before. What's to stop you exploring? Sometimes we get scared of things because we don't know them. We get scared because we know what other people have told us, but we don't see it for ourselves. And I wanted to see the world and experience things for myself. And, you know, you don't necessarily learn the good things about people, but, you know, it's, it's just about learning the next thing. And the more you learn about things, the less scary it becomes. Yeah, but S told me that I should stay here, that she needed my, my, my powers, my magic, that I would be helping people, that I'd be making Savona right again, you know? Maybe that's why I stuck around. She gave me something to believe in. You seem like a, I don't know. Don't say I'm a good guy. I'm not no, a good guy. No, I was gonna say like, you seem like a very angry person. Yeah, you could say that. And I just wonder if there's a way to explore that and maybe make peace with yourself. And maybe if you make peace with yourself, you might find yourself liking yourself a little bit more rather than projecting your anger onto others. You see him just kind of like slumps. He twists his head, he's like, maybe. Listen, all of you, you should get out of Kaylee's Rest while you can. I don't know what she's planning, but the abbotess is up to something and it's not gonna be good for foreigners, you know? You guys should leave while you can. At least, you saved my ass, so I should maybe try to <coughs> save yours. I don't know what it is. She doesn't talk to her, she doesn't talk about the details, but she's been making a big thing about a, a cleansing. Purge. Uh, she's building up to something. That's why she wanted all the faith leaders up at the Abbey. I don't know exactly why, but it's the start of something. Uh, something that happened, something that she began a day ago. I, I don't know what, but I know it's going to be bad news if you're not a native. How long do we have? She didn't say. She just said it'd be a few days. She keeps disappearing. Uh, something... I don't know where she goes, but she leaves the others in charge. If, um, if we knew she was watching us, what would that mean? Why was she watching us? Probably means that she thinks you're a threat to whatever she's doing. There's people. She's been bringing in a lot of civilians, people that are angry like me. People that aren't, haven't been with the Abbey for very long. I know that she's been getting... She's been giving them weapons and armor. She might be sending people after you. Right. Listen, I know you probably want to just hand me over to the Harvest Guard, and if that's what you want to do, then do it. But if you let me go, I'm just going to leave. I'll grab my few things from my old house, and then I'll leave. Maybe go traveling like this one says, and he kind of gestures towards Nova. This world is full of amazing things. We've seen a lot. It's, 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 worth, it's worth exploring. Yeah, maybe. I know I can't stay here. If the Abbotess finds out that I've spoken to you, I'm sure that I won't fare much better. She'll see me as a traitor, so I got no reason to stick around here. Equally, if you go back there, we're only going to find you again at some point, and that wouldn't be good for you either. You're planning on going to the Abbey? Who knows what we're planning to do yet. We'll figure out. Well, you should be careful. There's a lot of people up there. And they ain't no just pushover monks, you know what I'm saying? They've been training. They've been practicing. Some of them have started displaying magic that they never had before. Like it's just come out of nowhere. Mm. It's in our fair share of things. Well, you should be careful anyway. There's a lot of people in Kaylee's Rest as well that might lose a lot if we don't do anything. True. Listen, don't be heroes. Just get out. Why? You've already saved me. You don't need to be putting yourself in more danger. Well... What do we do with him then? Harvest Guard? Let him go? Is it in our power to do it? He's very lucky. The Squire, Jayla, is half-elf woman. Short, dark hair, kind of like a bob cut. Mm. Little tiny pointed ears. She's watching the whole thing. Like she's been sat there quietly. And she's... <clears throat> a 
I'll put it this way. It's just me and you guys here. Whatever you decide, I'll go with it. We're, uh, we're instructed as knights of the Black and Rose to make our own decisions. And whilst we're, we're meant to be peacekeepers and protect people from threats, undead, monsters on the road, sometimes, sometimes the law isn't the best way to solve a problem. So whatever you want to do, I'll back you on it. I can get him out of the city, take him through the corridors, take him through the tunnels, if that's what you want to do. But if he causes trouble, responsibilities on you guys for letting it go. I'll track him down, but you'll have to deal with anything that he causes. You'll have to accept the guilt of any difficulties. You're a conflicted man. Yeah. Which side? I didn't used to be, not until that weird old guardian grabbed me. I just thought that was it. When I saw you and he was talking about killing me to save your friend, I thought, this is it. I, I couldn't have imagined anything worse. It wasn't like dying. It wasn't, I didn't sense the light of the, of the, the Sun Lord. I didn't feel his warmth. All I could feel was that endless cold that like the life was just gonna go out of me and I'd just never exist again. I just I thought that was it. I and think, this one saved me. I think you need to look at that conflict and see which side you want to end up being on. I don't know yet. You just had five foreigners show you a little bit of mercy. Yeah. That's why I'm thinking. That's why I'm not so sure anymore. You've also seen two sides of the exact same coin. A guardian that saves your life and a guardian that tries to condemn you to death. Just the actions of one person does not dictate the actions of an entire race. Nope. But I'm not trying to talk myself out of being let free here, but the actions of five strangers don't undo a lot of the bad stuff that's happened. I get it. You're a wild elf. You probably don't like the stuff I've been saying, but your people have caused a lot of harm. They you think I haven't heard this before? You think I don't go to every single town here and people look at me like I'm scum? I'm used to it. Nope. I'm over it. Doesn't mean that I don't get to make my own decisions. Wild elves burn shops out of anger. Yeah. And Lilix is like, I ain't trying to say that you are. I'm just saying it might be hard for some people to let go of some of that. I'm glad that you've moved on, but well, maybe some of us ain't as, ain't as, uh, ain't as civilized. He called me civilized, Lucius. Anyway. That's a big word. Yeah. Um, <laughs> The fact Whatever you're going to do, just do it. The fact that you're able to reflect upon that shows that you're willing to change. And don't waste that Guardian's life. Sentry gave you a choice. Tracker was a good friend, and he worked hard and built a community here. Maybe consider that for yourself. Maybe try and do the same. Surround yourself with friends, with people that understand you and hopefully you can move on from this. Just like nods. Thanks. I'll try. Please do. If not, there's a big hammer and a massive guardian that'll tell you that that was a bad idea. I'll just let my fingers crackle with lightning around my hammer. It's like, yeah, trust me, I'm not going to be messing with you guys anytime soon. Good. Because I've got some moats. <laughs> well, he's like, he's like, imagine like he's literally hugging a thing the whole time. Okay. Well, I think we've made our decision then. Yeah. Okay. So uh, Jella will come over, unlock the manacles, take them off him. He rubs his wrists. She looks down at him like, do you have much stuff that you need to get? He just thinks, a few things, just stuff to travel. She's like, okay, come with me. She's like, I'll make sure that he doesn't go anywhere he shouldn't. Thank you for your help. He just turns around, he's like, it's, thank you, especially you, Guardian. But don't stick around here. The Abbotess, she's powerful. Whatever she's planning, it ain't good. And he leaves. I really hope that that does not come back to bite us in the ass. 
I have a feeling it will. <laughs> no, I just did that for for lol. <laughs> <laughs> Dramatic. I wouldn't. Noise. I wouldn't. I wouldn't give you any indication of whether well, no, that won't. was good or bad. I just like being a troll. I think our bigger problem is the guardian that did that in the first place. Well, we know he likes to meet people in the mausoleum gardens. Maybe we just tell the harvest guard to keep a closer eye on that. Maybe put some guards inside there. I think now he's been outed, and they know where his base of operations is. Breeze is going to be like the wind. Very good. <laughs> That's a good one, wasn't it? <laughs> Speaking he, of, um, I'll see you first. He mentioned a master. He did? Yeah. Oh, that sounds great fun. He said the master will be displeased or something like that. Yeah, he did. So there's at least someone else. I wager he's probably going to the master, whoever that is. I've lost count of how many people's hit lists we're on at this point, but let's just add another one to that. That's fantastic. He's, he's been around Kaylee's Rest for a while. We could maybe find out people who've gone missing. Maybe he's been taking people for himself. Maybe... If he's been taking criminals, then... And it shouldn't be hard to track him down if we did want to look for him. I don't think we have time. No. With the Abbott There's test. a bigger problem. True. I think we're about to get purged. Um, we're flying kind into the Speaking of cleansed. Um, I think we've used that as an episode title before. What? Out of the frying pan into the fire. <laughs> I was like, that's a good title for the episode. Nah, no, no, we can't. Not yet, it. we haven't. <laughs> well, we have just now. Um, speaking of purges and um, fire and bad things, uh, spoke with Hesper yesterday, last night. That was really cool. What? Um, Hesper, as in the in god. Dreams, we yeah. had a prayer. Uh, no, no, he uh, he's done this before. He he had a message for me in my dreams. What like oh. prime message or? No, no, I'm not going. No, I'm like night frost brain yes. stuff. Like me getting getting smited by evil lightning and then having a little vision. Uh, yeah, I was going to ask about that. I wasn't there. I still don't know anything about that. But um, it's maybe. Not important, it's fine. <laughs> <laughs> um. So, no, he, he, he was there. I spoke to him for a little while. The details are... What does he look cool. like? Um, he's uh, uh, like a man with wings. <gasps> An elf? I mean, I think we saw him in the Temple of Hesper. Well, not him, but... Sure, but a statue of depictions. him. Depictions. Did it look like, quite like him? Did it look like quite like him? Yeah, yeah, it's pretty accurate. It's him. You almost yeah. imagine, like, he's probably spoken to other clerics <laughs> who have then gone and said, Hesper looks like this. No, I'm the only one he speaks to. Um, <laughs> I'm the only special one. Anyway, uh, not a part of his message, or at least out of his control, I saw Kaylee's rest, um, but it was very much on fire. Um, and there were, were, were creatures, I don't know what they were, dark creatures running around the streets as well. Um, don't know if that's related, maybe a fever dream. I mean, you saw Kaylee's rest on fire, right? Mm -hmm. With bad creatures. Mm -hmm. Fire, oh. ash bringers, common theme. Also, really big door. Like in the sky. What? On fire. There was a little bit of lightning. Big wasn't door. me. A bit of Swear I'm not evil. Man, there wasn't lightning, it was not light. Me. It was like fire oh, yeah. and light just. Was the door no. open? Closed? It was opening, wasn't it? Hard to say. It, I'll leave that to Quill. There was a door. Um, a jar or not, it was on fire and it was in the sky. Was uh, anything not on fire? Uh, the creatures weren't on fire. I wasn't on fire, nor was Hesper. Um, well, that's all right then. So Can that's you, fine. That's good. What did Hesper say about all this? He didn't see it. It was out of his control, whatever it was, but it, it wasn't whatever. It wasn't something he was creating for me. So I don't know who was creating the message for me, if a message at all. Like I said, maybe the end of a dream when you start becoming lucid and start seeing weird things. Like a door in the sky. Like a door in the sky. Mm. I mean, it sounds like a vision, like a prophecy. I'm willing to, you know, go with it for now and assume this whole place is going to blow. Yeah. I feel like it's a safe assumption to make. It's also not too dissimilar to previous visions I've had. Uh, what? Are? I'm, I'm sure I've mentioned. Do, do, when, when, I, when I landed in the lowlands, wingless, 
Uh, I also, when I first saw Hesper for the first time, I again got visions kind of like this, but of, of places I've never seen before that have been on fire. And there was screaming and everything else, but it was just fire and chaos. No doors or dark creatures. I feel like I should be more worried about the dark creatures than the fire, but... I have a lot of questions. Yeah. It could be a nightmare, you know? Yeah. Could a be recurring just, nightmare. Could be you worrying about the fact that Kaylee's yeah. rest is, is falling into despair, and it could be a manifestation. Yeah. That interrupted and, the chat with Hesper. And there's no nearby gods that are rising to power that have a really big interest in fire. No. Oh, wait. <laughs> Palador. <laughs> sarcastic bird is sarcastic. <laughs> I don't know what the dark creatures are. The fact that you see visions that Hesper can't, is that perhaps why you were chosen by Hesper? Would he recognize the idea of me having visions out of his control? Did he take on board the fact that you, <coughs> did you tell him? I did, Fire? He, he, he vanished pretty quickly after that. He said it was, he didn't, he didn't see it. So he didn't listen to you? Oh no, he listened. He he knows about it, but 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 it he he but couldn't see it himself. Interesting. Hmm. Did he say anything else? Any other visions you that you want to tell us about just now? I feel like it's a good time. Anyone? That's for the group. Yeah, by is the way, not having because I feel like everyone is having visions. No, no, no. I'm good. You you spoke to a god, didn't you? Yeah. Yeah. Briefly, I was slightly unconscious. Okay. And when I say slightly, I was definitely almost dead. What? So, you spoke to a god, you spoke to god, you've seen the Prime, who, let's face it, is probably a god. Have you seen a god? The Prime. Lucius has seen the Prime. Seen, yeah. You've I, seen a god. I've seen that. I've seen Sentry's seen, Prime. Yeah. So maybe, maybe I'm a guardian. You just talked to a sword in I just head. talked to a sword in my head. <laughs> I mean, that's up there, though. I talk yeah. to a cloak in my head. There's yeah. a lot of... Uh, we're, really, we're really messed up, aren't we? Yeah, yeah. Should we get out of here before we burn? Yeah. I did have yeah. a vision that I walked into the Messenger's Guild and I didn't have any clothes on. That sounds more like a dream. That wasn't a good thing. I mean, are you technically wearing clothes right now? He's yeah, got a he little does have clothes. Like, got... I mean, I had nothing. Do you I have mean... feathers, though, at least? <laughs> oh, that would yeah. have been really funny yeah. if he did. <laughs> I don't know. I'm just saying, could be a vision. Did anyone notice? Everyone. And they laughed and pointed. That's a fairly common dream. <clears throat> could be a vision, though. I'll note it down. Okay. Good. So before we take the break, <laughs> <laughs> what is the plan? Where? What do you guys want to do now? Good question. So I mean, well, it's a good okay. question. We go know that it's just fun to go yeah. to sleep. <laughs> Travel, you guys I want to go home to Vortensar. <laughs> yeah, you got a long fucking way to get there, buddy. Just like You're a long way from like home. Bruce Banner. You've got more <laughs> hope of trying to Dorothy your way out of it by yeah. clicking your heels three times. <laughs> We've heard a lot about Mason and the stuff that's apparently happened to him. Caretaker Mason? You met him briefly. He's yeah, the one that he healed you the, after yeah. the temple was on fire. Oh, but I mean, we know it's that Earth Ganassi. he was like attacked as well. Mm -hmm. Also, I think that there was, you guys potentially, you mentioned you wanted to speak to Malika, I think, like last week. Mm. I feel like that's the right place yeah. to go. Well, because she Since possibly heard, we should go and tell an adult. Ashbringer. <laughs> yeah. This is way Queen outside. An adult. <laughs> this is way outside of pay grade. I think we need to find some responsible adults. Yeah. 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 I, think, I think it's Malika, and then she'll tell us. Okay. You Get go the find, hell out of here! You're gonna go find Malika Dawnblast. Yes. All right. I think it's probably a good idea to warn her, right? Malika's. Yeah, exactly. Send them to warning. In that case, we're going to take a break. When we come back, the party are going to go tell an adult. Yeah. Yeah. Help us! <laughs> See you in five. See you in a bit. That's the episode name. <laughs>
Oh. Hello, welcome back. They're doing some weird slow down Yoshi noise. Bring heart. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what they're doing. Welcome back to High Rollers. The party. Do you ever know what we're doing, no, Mark? I don't. Yeah. Uh, the party have just had some very uh, quite intense conversations with gods, with mortals, um, making plans for the future. And now the party makes their way through the city of Kaylee's Rest. Early morning, sun is uh, just beginning to crest over the hills. Bathing everything in a golden orangey light. As you make your way through the Queen's Plaza towards the main uh, m main guild buildings or the main sort of um, administration buildings of the city itself, you arrive and there are harvest guards who recognize you, wave you through. You see there is a large a room full of busy clerks at writing desks, um, copying up things like reports and accounts and notes and that sort of thing. When you approach Malika's office, you hear a conversation taking place already. Um, I understand, Mason, but I can't just take... I can't do anything based on dreams. We are, it's clear that something else is happening, but we need more than this. Uh, what if the others are in danger? We can't risk them. And then dreams. as you end, dreams. you get dreams. like a... Come in. Dreams? So you poke <laughs> 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 sat on her desk. So with uh, sat on her desk, a uh, pair of tight kind of riding trousers, legs kind of folded over each other, loose blouse. Um, you see Malika Dawn bless this kind of <coughs> radiant silver haired, uh, kind of tan skin. Um, kind of, she looks tired and stressed. Uh, speaking with an elderly Earth Ganassi. So he has a human frame and humanoid features. Very very dark coloured skin. Uh, you know. Very, um, very well weathered tan lines, but there are parts of his skin where rock and earth is almost like breaking through his skin itself, and occasionally it crumbles off and it kind of regrows a little bit. And you can see his eyes are the colours of opals. Um, they're actually just pure white, but they're like the colours of opals, like they're stones themselves. Um, and he's wearing loose robes uh, emblazoned upon which is a anvil with a half wreath of flowers over it, which is the symbol of Velena, the goddess of the forge mistress, she's called. Um, you see him and he's just, uh, you knock and enter and you say, dreams. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Let me redo that. Okay. Stop. I don't just, dreams? Please, I mean, please do. It sounded like that's so what you did. Uh, Malika is, is now a good time? She like gestures, she's just like, ah, oh, yes, my, uh, my new allies and um, bringers of bad news. Hi. Please come in, yes. Uh, well. And, uh, have you met, uh, well, I believe you have met Caretaker Mason. Caretaker Mason, uh, these are the individuals, as you know them. He kind of looks around, it's like, oh, greetings to you. Greetings. Um, I was, uh, uh, is, do you wish me to stick around, Malika? I can come back later if you need me to. And she's just like, no, no, let's hear what they have to say. Um, we can. We need to discuss your dreams um, and figure uh, things out. Yeah, and actually, Mason, it's probably good you do stay for a bit. What dreams have you been having? Well, last night, I had a strange dream, <coughs> which in my experience with Valena can sometimes be uh, the result of some sort of vision or prophecy. I saw Kaylee's rest bathed in flames. Dark there were creatures, creatures of shadow and ash. A doorway. On fire. A light with a woman wrapped in chains. Oh yes, woman wrapped in chains. <laughs> I literally am. We tried to get that out of you. <laughs> you saw it too. Uh, I did. Uh, you are a priest? I, well, I, I had a, let's say it, a fortnightly meeting with Hesper. Um, kind of, he seems confused. Uh, well, then you're a priest, surely, he's, he's, he's the things he's thinking. Uh, but you saw the same thing. I saw the same thing. But Hesper couldn't see it at all. Malika, clearly this is evidence that something bigger is going on here. She's like, yes, I gathered that, Mason, thank you. You cool. both shared the stream. Obviously there is something happening here. Oh, we know about that. The cleanse. The purge. <laughs> the cleanse. The cleansing purge. The... Right. Sorry, I know you say that we always bring us bad news. Maybe one day I'll bring you some good news. Like, if we way. said it in a happy just way, would that details. help? Details. Let's begin with details. You can't just say the word purge and cleanse and leave it at that. We really don't have that much more. 
We might... Well, I would like whatever else you have. Who, what, when, how did you come by this information? Quill, I'm going to leave this one to you because I'm going to mess it up again. And I'm doing great so you far. You know what? The Arakroker is often quite clever with his wordings. Why don't the two of you tell me? Sentry, Lucius, the two that got into the, the crypt. Mm, yeah. Yes, the two clever, stealthy people. Yes. You got into the crypt? What yes. are you talking about? Not crypt. Mausoleum. Mausoleum. Yes. Not important. Not important. Shall oh, I? yes. Yeah, we shouldn't do that. <laughs> That's bad. Oh, yeah. uh, Sentry. Um, so we, we encountered uh, an incident with one of the Ashbringers. Um, he uh, informed us of a plan to purge Katie's rest in fire of some sort. But you have no further details? He said that Abatess has put a plan in motion and has been working on it for several days now and she has lots of really powerful people trained. And it would be especially bad for any foreigners. And that's why she and requires that's all of us. All and of the priests. How did you come by this information? So you had an encounter with one of these Ashbringers. How? He was he was going to um, do a bad. He was gonna he was gonna yeah burn down a shop, and we stopped him, and interrogated him. Yes, absolutely. Now there's elements of truth, and then there are there's a vague a bit of lie. I mean, <laughs> it's not entirely a lie. It's just you've omitted a lot. So I think that <laughs> let's still, let's keep let's have a deception check from Sentry. Mm. I mean, it's not a lie. You've just omitted a shit yeah. ton of information. And it's more the trying to gloss that over, like blah blah blah. <laughs> oh, yeah, it's thirteen. Thirteen. Okay. Technically, we use a passive insight, which would be okay. Thirteen. She's like, all right. So you stopped him burning down a shop. You say, all right. So you've caught this Ashbring, and, and he what just told you about these plans? Where is he now? We bargained with him. Bargained with? And that if he tells us... His own life. Because he almost lost it. He almost lost his life. Yeah. How did he almost lose his life? Necromancy. <laughs> what do you mean? <laughs> she's just like... You can see she's close to snapping. She's like... What necromancy? <laughs> he, was, he, was, he had powers of his own that he had no control over. He, he was he was a necromancer not in control of his own powers. Deception check. <laughs> Nova's just frantically looking around the room, just like. Mm. Uh, seventeen plus. He was the necromancer Thanks. queen. Oh, I was like condensating, <laughs> like. So he was some sort of he was some sort of mage who had didn't have control of his necromancer powers, and you 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 saved his life or you bargained his life. It, he. We could have killed him, and we didn't. Right, <laughs> but where is he now? Away? He got away. He got away. <laughs> there is this. He got away? What do you mean, he got away? He gave us a lot of information about the Abatess. Yes. Wait, it sounds like he didn't. He's given you very vague, cryptic information about the Abatess, but continue. <coughs> Not that vague and cryptic, but... Well, then what is this purge? What is the Abatess up to? He, she wants to retake the... Place and make it back what it Sounds was. cryptic to me! <laughs> I mean, maybe he was just a we one level... Varen. Varen's the one that took him away, right? We are Varen? Who was v Varen? No, Jay Jayla. Like, Jayla? Uh, one of the acolytes of the Temple of Kalara. Because we were is... under the temple. You were oh. under the Temple of Kalara. <laughs> <laughs> Got lost. At this point... So... I don't know, you guys are remember, right? The ritual. The Ritual. It's gonna sit on the floor. What ritual? <laughs> okay, so <laughs> Lucius, why don't you tell me what's going on? Go ahead, Lucius. Yeah, Lucius. Yeah. So me and Sentry snuck into the mausoleum to find Breeze because we wanted to extend Tracker's life. <laughs> <coughs> I am aware who Tracker is. Who is Breeze? Breeze is a guardian. Right. Okay. So you snuck in to a place that you're not meant to be. You broke into. Yes, it was very naughty. Mm, carry on. But it was for good reason, because Tracker was dying, and that's really bad. Carry on. And it turns out Breeze is a baddie, because he performs necromancy, and he caught the Ashbringer, and wanted to suck out all of his life energy and spells, in order to put it into Tracker to extend his life. 
and you stop Human it. sacrifice! Right, and, and so what happened? We made the decision that he isn't allowed to do that, so we stopped him. Okay. And in return, the Ashbringer felt guilty for his, you know, hatred for all races other than the ones that are in Savona, mm -hmm. and he gave us some information that you should leave town because the Abbotess has got a big cleanse slash purge going on, and she's... And then... And what then, happened to him? Because we are good people. A century in particular saved life. We all decided that it would be a waste for Tracker to die to save this man's life for him to just go back to the Abbotess and do this cleansing. He had a change of heart. Where is he now? This is somewhere. Yes. He went away. To live a good new life. She stands she stands up off the desk. Oh, we're She turns, in trouble. she walks behind it. We're grounded. Takes this angelic, beautiful great sword, takes it off the wall. Excuse me, Emily. <laughs> just starts like destroying her chair and desk oh, wow. and these angelic wings just erupt from her back these l golden wings of luminous light light begins blazing out of her eyes a halo of golden fire erupts around her head ah! she just slashes and slices away until her desk is in ruins Mason just kind of holds his arms he's holding like the rest of you behind him he's kind of like doing this in front of you all and then she just stops, <clears throat> puts the greatsword back on the wall, the wings <sighs> disappear. Now that I've calmed down a little, you should not have done that. You should have brought him to me. He would have been <clears throat> properly questioned and imprisoned. I understand what you were trying to do, but that is not how things should be done. We will need to discuss this after we have dealt with this plan that the Abbotess has. Mm -hmm. Do you need us to leave town before it goes on fire? Because we're terrible? No. No, I need you to stay here and help me deal with this matter. And seeing as you've let away my best lead into what was going on, we... I think that that is the least you can do. He said that what information he gave us is all he knew. Quillock, I do not believe you are so naive as to believe that he is not capable of lying. There are ways of making somebody speak. Oh. Brookstone! We didn't check! <laughs> they seem very upset though. Be that as it may, he still should have been brought in for questioning. Also, what happened to this breeze, this necromancer? What happened to him? He got away. He turned to mist. He escaped by turning into mist. We didn't let that one away. We didn't let him. No, he, he ran she away. moves up to the door. <clears throat> Dwellen. Can you just pl make a note that I have a necromatic guardian to deal with as well, please? It's just like, you are? <laughs> you heard me. Closes the door. Sorry, I just need to add that to my increasing pile of things to do. Oh, anyway. Are we on that list? You might soon be. Okay. I think our lists <coughs> are quite similar at this point, though. <clears throat> In fairness, we mm. said we needed a responsible adult, so we came straight to you. Oh, well, I'm relieved. Now, <clears throat> Obviously, Caretaker Mason and Quillock have had this vision, and whilst I, with just a one instance of a vision, I was willing to, I can't commit resources <coughs> to it. <clears throat> the evidence of both of you and this information you have learned from this escaped Ashbringer, obviously there is something. Unfortunately, this morning I received a message from the Abbotess that <clears throat> ah, the... I've got to find my notes on what it's exactly called. I mean, you scattered all of your notes across the floor when you smashed your desk, so take your time. Thank you. Do you, do you want some help? <coughs> the Abbot S has invoked the Dusk Morning. This is a period of time following the death of a leader within the Church of Palador that they enter a three day period of mourning where, due to ancient rites, the Abbey is no longer considered part of Suvonan territory. It is almost independently owned by the Church of Palador. I cannot send troops marching into it without possibly invoking the wrath of the Church in Goldthrone and other organisations. 
very convenient. Wow. So she just convenient declared her own republic for a three-day period. Uh, it is temporary, and as she is the abbotess now that the previous abbot has passed on, that is her right. That doesn't mean I'm going to let it sit. Whilst I cannot send any official forces, uh -oh. I can hire a group of plucky mercenaries to go uh, and investigate it no. for me. Plucky responsible mercenaries. We're not plucky. Who have you got in mind? You are very plucky. We're not plucky. Promise. And we say... Mm. Go-getters. Idiots. <clears throat> yes. No, I don't think we're suitable for the job. Pawns. Well, you're my best chance, so too bad. You are, of course, welcome to turn it down, but and I will try and find others to go in my place. But if I send anybody from the Harvest Guard, this is going to cause problems. And what is the plan? I need somebody to go in. Now, I've received other messages from Rest Keeper Jasna and Star Mourner Elanis, the heads of the Temple of Kelara and the Temple of Siaska. They were escorted to the Abbey the night that uh, <coughs> the Temple of Hesper was attacked. And they have written to me to tell me that they are in good health, that they are there willingly, that they are there to conduct these peace talks with the abbotess, who has provided me with untold witnesses from her own church, as well as uh, the mayor and several other people I believe to be in her pocket, yeah. that this is all above, all fine, that they are simply discussing the future of Cayley's Rest and Savona. Well, I don't believe it for a second. These kind of papers can be forged. <clears throat> these sorts of things can easily be forged, but... It does mean that my hands are somewhat tired. I need proof that the Star Mourner or the Rest Keeper are being kept there against their will. I need proof that they are up to something. I just wonder if we're the best people to go in. I was going to say that. Because we had a conversation with the Abbotess. Well, she came over to us and she kind of... Uh, Hates well, us. Did, what did she say after? Um, she wanted us to be tracked to find out where we're staying and... Mm. He's keeping an eye on us, let's just say that. You do not have any ways of uh, uh, disguising yourselves or being clandestined in any way? We have a night frost and an echo. Um, Sentry's quite loud. Echo's not. Yeah, echo, I yeah. feel invisible. I do not have anybody else I can ask. I understand if you wish to turn it down, if you worry that there is danger to yourselves. Thinking more of that. jeopardizing the mission. Well, I'm not expecting you to go in there asking for tea and cakes. Oh. I'm expecting something more of an infiltration. What's the legal ground here if we're sort of maybe discovered a little bit? Not good. But whilst the abbotess's right of dusk morning prevents me from being too involved in what happens on its grounds, it also means that you would not necessarily be under the jurisdiction of Suvonan law either, you would only have to answer to the Church of Palador, of which if there is evidence that the Amethyst is up to something that the Church frowns upon, I'm sure that they would not be willing to take any actions against you. It creates a window for both of us. I cannot go in there, but at the same time, if you enter, then you are not doing anything illegal by the lands of Suvona. But we're a bunch of foreigners in a temple during a time of their mourning. That will, well, foreigners would normally not be a problem. The Temple of Palador doesn't have anything against them normally. It is these zealots that do. I am not saying I am expecting that if you are caught, you should be prepared to defend yourselves and be willing to take risks. But it is a rescue mission. All I need you to do is go in there, find Star Mourner Elanis, find Rescue Pajasna and get them out. Is there an easy way in? Is that up to us to find out? I'm afraid so. As far as I'm aware, the abbey itself is walled. The walls are approximately 15, 20 feet high. The portcullis has been shut. I'm not aware of any other entrances in or out. They are somewhat self-sustained. They have their own vegetable plots. They, can, they have water access. I've already found one secret entrance. Do you have any supplies that could maybe help us, like potions or anything? I can secure something, yes, I can provide that. I will obviously also pay you. This will need to be under the table, of course. The table you just smashed? The very same. Okay. 
Um, I can, if, if you wish, I can, rather than giving you hard gold, I can provide you with potions. Um, we can make sure that the city uh, reimburses Rose Meadow. That might be useful. Yes. 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 So is that the trouble? Would we say, I'm thinking, this does provide somewhat considerable danger, and of course, if you are caught and the Church of Palador is involved, I will do my best to make cases for you to indicate that this is, you were doing this on behalf of the people of Savona. Uh, I, am, I have approximately about 1,200 gold, uh, which is in my bursary to pay out. I mean, that would be great. Not really doing it for the gold. I know. But it is, I cannot accomplish this myself. Keeping us alive with potions, definitely. Well, I'll subtract that from the final amount, but it won't come to the full amount. I don't believe there are enough supplies in the city itself. Any flame resisty potions? I can ask Rose Meadow. She is quite capable. Are there any other alchemist shops in...? Alchemy specifically, no. There is a Dale Geld company, but I believe the uh, proprietor is mainly focused on weapons and armour. Oh, to help your investigation with the Ashbringer, he his father used to own an alchemy shop, and it all burnt. Hmm. I'll look into it. And he was very angry. Do you have a name for him? Ashbringer. Uh, Wilden Baker. Wilden Baker. Wilden, Wilden Baker. Baker. I know the Baker name. Yes. That was a few years ago now, 10, 15 years ago. Um, I remember an incident. The young boy had a... His magic came out of control, um, burnt a large portion of the shop. Uh, the shop didn't burn down as such. Large portions of it were burned. Many of their supplies, they never recovered financially. Apparently well. he asked Rose Meadow for help, and she said she couldn't. And that's sort of why he maybe hated centaurs and foreigners coming into the city and setting up businesses. He sort of blames her for his father losing the business. You will find that many of these Savonians carry similar things. As a foreigner myself, <clears throat> I have been subjected to many such things. Claims that Azimar mercenaries have uh, uh, taken over their roles, uh, replaced the services of mercenaries or fighters from around the area. It's always the same story, Nova. It's unfortunately just a way of the world in that many Savonians aren't willing to change. They wish everything to remain the same. And the world is changing. Ever since the Sundering, things have changed. My people travel around and we fill the needs that we find. Your people provide magical support, research. You don't see the Sky Elves turning us away. Sadly, this is a problem where... This is a people problem. It's, it's not an excuse for poor behaviour. Certainly not in my mind, anyway. But, that is beside the point. <sighs> I, think we I can have military forces on standby, should you uncover anything. But I'm, I'm afraid I can't risk sending them in. It would just, if this is all unfounded, if this is all petty gains, uh, uh, nothing of a, uh, that is worth a major response, I could get myself and the Harvest Guard in considerable trouble with the churches. Not just the Church of Paladol, the other churches, they'd want to respect this dusk morning as well. It's an ancient tradition. I think if we could just have some help with potions, perhaps, and stuff to make us, you know, resistant to the burning, maybe we feel a bit more yes, confident. Yes, I can, I can certainly try and supply those if you're willing to take a smaller cut in the amount of pay. If we're alive. Very well. <laughs> <laughs> Very well. Well, uh, it will take me a few hours to gather those supplies. Where should I send them? Hmm, good question. Okay. We should probably move if, you know, they were trying to find out where we were staying and stuff. Mm. Mm. Send it to Arvel and Valor in the... Do we get them involved? All they're doing is getting potions delivered to them. But then they see a connection between us and Valor and Arvel. Oh, good point. Because we're being watched. Send it to the mausoleum, we'll sneak in again. No, send it to... <laughs> send it... Send it to, um... I've totally forgotten the centaur's name. Rose Meadow. Rose well, I mean, she'll be making them. She'll be making we could just them. pick them up. We could we'll pick, pick them, them up from, from Rose Meadow. Yeah. Right, very well. I will arrange for that to happen. 
You'll need to give her a few hours to make the preparations. Uh, I may have to buy out some of her stock and supplies for this, but I believe it to be worth it. Mason, do you have anything to add? Yeah. The, these Ashbringers, they came to they came to my temple the same night that they burned down Hesper. I could tell that something was wrong, and I felt that something was up. They didn't expect me to have as many people as I did. We were hosting a small little gathering for some of the artisans. Uh, they've just finished their apprenticeships. They're having a small little gathering, a few drinks, a little get together. They weren't expecting as many of us as there were. About four or five of them turned up, young men and women, full of anger, hatred. But I think they were put off. I simply said no. They tried to convince me to come. Told them no, get out. They did. I suspect if I'd been on my own, or if it hadn't been as many of us as there were, they would have tried dragging me out, kicking and screaming like they did the poor Dean. So, whatever they're up to, they wanted all of the faith leaders. Now, I can't imagine why. I can't imagine anything, any political reason that they would gain for holding us hostage. I'm afraid I don't have much more, but it's something worth thinking about. Maybe, maybe they're holding all the people that have visions with their gods. Maybe whoever's in control, who, the god is trying to get the attention <coughs> of the other gods and held, holding them captive. Maybe it's above us. Could be, could be. I don't think this is Palador. I don't think it's connected to him. Do you think it could be something to do with Darvain coming back? The remnant? I don't see why. We've just been hearing in our travels and seeing things that Starbane, the remnant, uh, Sarkira, things like this are being mentioned more and more. We've not had any problem with the remnant here in a very long time, decades, uh, hundreds of years. I think the last time, hundreds, 200 years ago, I think. They tried to attack Kaylee's Rest, but nothing since then. It's too big of a settlement. Too many guards, and generally smaller in number. Possibly. I can't rule it out. All I can say is that I knew the abbot, the previous abbot of the abbey. I've known many Palador worshippers in my time. Been an old, I'm an old Ganesi. I've been around a while. It's not his way. He does represent some things that I disagree with. But this cleansing, the purging, that's not Palador. Mm, Hesper said otherwise as well. Wise God. Um, do you... A little flighty, but very wise. Flighty. <laughs> um, do you know what the Lady in Chains means? Or who it is? Not much of a fortune teller. More of a healer and a maker. I'm afraid I couldn't say. Hmm. Something to keep in mind, though. Whatever we saw, we saw it for a reason. Not another god, then. Could be. Not one I can think of. A door in the sky and a woman in chains. That's a very specific image. Did she look shackled or were the chains part of her fashion? You would say she looked shackled. But she didn't seem to be distressed. She was she was laughing when you saw her. She was laughing maniacally. Oh. Okay. Because I've seen chains coming in and out, you know. Smaller ones, though, not like big. It's this guy off thing, sorry. <laughs> what, what do you... What? Chains are fashionable now and again. They're out right now. I don't think the vision of the fiery doom of the end of Kelly's Rest was uh, fashion-related. Just a theory, though. I wasn't Just being foretold of the upcoming trends, no. I don't think so, anyway. I could be. Well, if he is, then you know that. Chains are coming in. Yeah. <coughs> um, uh, do you know of any gods that normally send messages? Varies. I've heard tell of other priests and clerics that sometimes can but normally it's requested. Normally it's, uh, you must perform rituals to ask questions when you receive a vision from your guard. But I have heard of some who, when lacking guidance, are spoken to. 
I've never had the pleasure with Valena myself, but she tends to be a quiet goddess. But I've heard, I've heard of a few. Siaska, sometimes the echoes of her voice can be heard. Hmm. Okay. I was just wondering. Yeah. Um. Okay, so what do we do now then? That is up to you. Yes. It is obviously up to you how you want to progress, but I must stress that infiltrate the Abbey, locate the Rest Keeper and Star Mourner, the heads of Siaskas and Kalara's churches. Ascertain where they are safe, if they're being held there against their will, and if they are, get them out. Okay. After that, we'll decide on the next steps. But whilst they're holding them as hostages, it is a greater risk. If that is what is happening. And if you happen to discover whatever it is that the Abbotus is planning and you have a way of stopping it, please do. Mm -hmm. uh, well, what if um, we find someone who is not in a good way and tells us all of the plans and then we decide we'll let them go? <laughs> Try not to do that anymore. Okay. <laughs> Just keep them secure somewhere and leave them for me. Okay, that's good. Yes. Sure. That would be great. Well, I will go and send somebody to start dealing with these potion preparations. Um, I cannot promise you how much we will be able to provide, but I will try and get what I can. All right? Nice. Take care. And she gestures to her door for you to leave. Yeah. And I guess you may leave now. We do. Okay, great. I like the sword, by the way. It's a cool sword. Thank you. It is uh, a gift from my celestial. Oh, we should have kept that Ashbringer around. He could have helped us infiltrate. He might not be gone yet. That's true. He did say he was picking up supplies. Where would the supplies be? We could look for Chela. Hmm. Surely it would be at his home. Yeah. We could at least get him there. If we find it, we could get intel on the abbot and where the entrances and exits are. Mm -hmm. And who's in, in there. Yeah, so you want to try and track him down? Yeah. Okay, now none of you know where Wilden Baker's home is, so <coughs> I guess you would start asking around. Could we ask Malika? Yeah. She, I mean, she vaguely remembers it, but she couldn't probably tell you where it is. Um, she would probably be in South Street, that's probably where she'd tell you to start looking. Because um, that tends to be where the most of the artisans and merchants that aren't making loads of money tend to be. Oh. Um, so she recommends you talk in South Street. In fact, actually, Mason's there. Mason would know because he was an art. He, yeah, Mason can give you exactly where the house is. Oh, okay. Because Mason knows all the artisans, like, because Valena is all about craft as well. So he would keep in touch with all of the different people from there. So, yeah, Mason's just like, yes, I know the Baker family. A tragic, uh, tragic accident. They have a small home just uh, a few streets away from the temple. Uh, burnt mostly, but still intact. Thank you. Yes. Okay. Yeah, he village. just can give you the location for it easily enough. We can try there. If not, she was supposed to be taking him out of town, so he could just hang around near the exit. The many yeah. exits. Well, I would say that you have you went straight to the Queen's Plaza, you spoke to Malika, but that conversation was like, maybe like half an hour at best. So by the time you get down to South Street, which would take you no more than sort of an hour, it's likely that you might just catch them. Let's roll a dice. <laughs> okay. Let's roll a dice. And we'll say anything below a 15. So you make your way, um, make your way winding through the streets of Kayla's Rest. The sun is rising, morning has begun. You can see there are merchants and artisans hard at work uh, making their way through. And you catch Jayla and uh, Wilden making their way back towards the Temple of Kalara. Um, nice. You can see he's got a hood, he's got like a traveler's cloak, the hood pulled up, small kind of like little satchel bag full of things. Um, and Jailer is walking with him, sword sheathed, but kind of keeping an eye on him. Um, doesn't have a hand on him, but he's walking alongside him. And you kind of bump into each other, and he's like, uh, he looks up, he's like, looks curiously. Hi. Hey. What? You guys change assistant. your mind or something? We require your assistance or something. All right. Sure. Oh, hang on. He's. Hey, that's right. He was talking like this. Yeah. Yeah, sure. <laughs> okay. 
So uh, we've been tasked with infiltrating the uh, Temple of Palador. He's like, shh, keep your voice down. Come on. Okay. And he gestures back towards like the burnt remains of his house. Um, you guys should be careful. Uh, Abby's got people all over the place. It's not just, you know, people up there. It's regular folks. If they hear you talking like that, they're going to tell them. Is there a lot of people in the town? There's a fair few people that believe in what the abbess is saying. Yeah, sure. Right. Like I told you earlier, a lot of people have lost out. Yeah. Maybe they're not crazy like I used to be. But there's a lot of people that, if they hear something, there's no risk to their neck, they'll go and tell them. Sure. So... So what do you need help with? Well, I'm not sure if I can be much use, but... How do we get in if everything is closed off? The right of... Uh, right of dusk morning. Uh, Everything's so she, closed off completely. I know that the abbess, uh, I guess it makes sense that she uh, calls that in. Well, I mean, there's no, if you're asking me if there's like secret doors or stuff like that, none that I know of. We just come in and out through the main gate. The main gate, there's two towers, keeps the portcullis open and closed. But, uh, yeah, I'm sorry. I mean, I can. If you got a paper, I can sketch out a rough layout of the, the abbey, but... I literally just flick open my notebook. <laughs> All right, well. sure. Take me a little bit of time. Give me a second. And he takes the parchment. <coughs> oh, you've already got one. <laughs> so he kind of gives you... It's a rough layout of the abbey and its grounds. Okay. So, um, he points out the various buildings. It says, the walls, you know, circles the whole place. It's older than Kaylee's Rest. The abbey was built here before the settlement was. <coughs> it's built onto a small hill just next to the city. Two dormitories, a training hall, bell tower, and then the abbey itself. Abbey's mainly made up of the church. You got things like the chapter house, uh, yeah, the monk's father, and kitchens, parlors, that sort of thing, a library. As far as I know, I mean, inside the abbey, it's pretty old, so there's probably maybe secret doors and stuff for the old abbots and monks to get around, but, I mean, I wasn't, I wasn't that big of a deal. I was mainly spending my time in the training hall and the dormitory. Sometimes in, I'd go to the library and the church for sermons, but that's about it. Okay. And during the Rite of Dusk morning, everything's closed off, but how would you get into the place? Would you just go through the front door still? Oh, any devoted follower of Palador is allowed in. But I don't think that that's going to work for you guys if you're looking like you are, you know what I mean? What sort of check? Well, there's guards. Do they check each individual? Basically, if you're not a member of the Abbey, if you're not a monk or a priest, you're not going to get let inside. I did notice that quite a few folks from the town are missing. I think they may have gone up there before the, the rite was invoked. They're staying up there, you know? So everybody in the Abbey knows everybody? Pretty much, yeah. We live, everybody lives up there, they eat together, sleep together, you know. So you can't pretend to be. You know, disguise won't work. <sighs> I mean, maybe if you try and pass it off. I mean, like I said, a bunch of these new city, a bunch of townsfolk have obviously, I think, have gone up there. Uh, they came up into the, the abbey before the abbess declared the dusk morning, right? So maybe not everybody knows everybody anymore. Like most of the senior knights, uh, senior paladins, senior monks, senior priests, they know each other. But maybe if you pass yourself off as just a, you know, a lowly acolyte or something like that, you might be able to get past. Like I said, a lot of people have been going in and out of the Abbey recently. If we um, have to completely cover our faces. Um, I mean, the other way is if you can get over the walls, you know, it's dark. There are guards. The paladins mainly patrol, but there's less of them than everybody else, so maybe. Hmm. Okay. Any other plans? If you are a spiritual leader who is perhaps staying at the Abbey at the invitation of the Abbotess, whereabouts in the Abbey do you think you might be staying? I mean, like the ones that we were told to bring? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, I don't think that they were necessarily, like I said to you, they were invited, but uh, the Abbotess kind of implied that no wasn't an option, so I don't imagine they're anywhere comfortable. I think that there's something beneath the Abbey, like old crypts or something, but I never went down there. Oh, mm. crypts, are there, we found... Not crypts, but like, um, not like where I was when you guys were that creepy guardian, you know? I see. But like, uh, tunnels or like <coughs> rooms? I don't know, they were old, they are built before the abbey. And do they spread quite far? I don't know, I've never been. Just hear talk, you know? 
That could be something. Um, I don't know where they lead, or... I mean, even Mason might know about old tunnels underneath the town. I feel like he would have brought that up. True, but does he necessarily make the connection that they might lead to straight to the Abbey? Maybe. It's probably worth pursuing. That's all I can do. I mean, do you have any spare um, Ashbringer clothes? We don't. They just wear the normal Palador robes, you know. But everybody's got the brand. And he holds up his arm, and it shows this closed fist version, the alternate alternative version of the Palador symbol. Most people, if you're part of the Ash, if you're part of the cult, then you you bear the brand. It's part of the initiation. Nova, can you fake that brand onto us with quill and ink? I could try. Maybe it's a brand. It's like a scar. It's like yeah. a, somebody's. Never mind. It's like it's a cattle brand. Probably it would maybe pass at a glance, but it would look obvious if someone inspected it. I mean, that you can see it's it burnt in his skin. Mm. I don't really want. You that. could probably use like a disguise <coughs> kit, like a, like with putty and makeup, to make it look like a scar rather than a, a magical tattoo. Don't know but if you were just trying to create it with magic, it wouldn't have the three D element. It would just be a flat illusion that your hand would pass through. So again, like like Nova, <coughs> like like Nova says, like if it was at a glance, it can pass for it. But as soon as somebody touches it, they would know it was fake. Do not have disguise self? No, and I imagine illusion. there's wanted posters all over the Abbey with our faces on it anyway. Um, Listen, that's all I can do, I'm sorry. Now I kind of want to get out of here, get away from this place. Too many bad memories. <laughs> There's a thinking face there. Can I roll an insight check? Sure. <laughs> <laughs> no, four. I just want to say that he's telling us like truths. As far as you can tell, this guy seems to be genuinely feels a genuine guilt and genuinely wants to get away from this place. Like, he seems very eager to leave and put this behind mm. him. Okay. Is there any um, magical forces protecting the Abbey? Magical forces? Like people stationed there that detects any sort of magic going in and out? No, I don't think so. There's spellcasters. A lot of the priests have uh, divine blessings. Like I said, there's a few people that have been showing magic that they never had before. Oh, there is one thing. There's a statue in the cloister of the main abbey. I mean, I've always heard rumors that it's enchanted. It's supposed to come alive and attack anybody who comes, you know, is, uh, it defends the abbey, you know? Is Obviously, it? we've never seen that happen, so... That was the first time for everything. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Let's stay clear of that. Well, case. you can't miss it because it's uh, it's got an enchantment. It looks like it's on fire. It's like a light source. It's on fire too. Oh, that's good. Yeah, but it, the flames don't hurt. They're just uh, they're, they're you know fake. How big? Oh, like ten feet, twelve feet tall. Twelve. Feet. Like a big, big. It's a big statue of Palador. A big statue of Palador mm. comes to life. Comes Smash to life. Anyone. Potentially. It's on fire too. Fire, we just thought. Yeah. It's pretty cool. Mm. Well, anyway, thank you. You've made a good start, at least to your uh, new life. Sure. I mean, look, you guys want to go in there, be my guest, but I don't think it will go well for you. Well, it's not going to go well for the town if we do nothing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yep. He just doesn't say anything problem to that. now, apparently. It's like, all right, well, I'm going to get going. Hey, um, if you ever make it to Vortensar, like, go try out my mom's cafe. Tell her I say hi. Okay. I don't think I'm gonna go that far. Maybe yeah. just go somewhere else in Savona. You never know. Yeah, maybe. Maybe. He just nods. And then leaves. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Taylor kind of just gives you a nod and heads off with him. I'll escort him. Cool. Good. So, I think basically that leaves us with either finding out about the tunnels or climbing over the walls. And from previous experience, climbing is not our strong point. <laughs> I mean, I can levitate yep. over them. True. Nova, you can cast invisibility. Mm -hmm. That's why I ask you about the magic thing. What if you were just invisible and you found them and you did all the things? What? <laughs> you want me to go in on my own into an abbey 
full of the Bernie people and find two people who are probably in the crypts underneath where a statue is on fire and can come to life and set me on fire and while you are all just sat in an inn listening to the furbolg Oh, that sounds good. We nice, need actually. to go see him. Hmm. We could go see the furbolg while you're doing that. It would be very efficient. However, no, we'd bring uh, Night Frost. And then there'd be communication. And as soon as there's any problem, we'd spring into action. But I feel like the more people we put in there, the, the higher risk we have of being spotted. I mean, how fast is this action going to be if I'm all the way in the crypt and they're about to set me on fire? I mean, I don't know what else to do. Do you know it? it I. It, uh, bah! I agree, it's Nova. A it's a very good yeah. point. I'm running this scenario in my head. Hmm, percentage wise. 5% chance of succeeding. That's pretty good. You're invisible though. What if they have things that can see invisible people? That's why I asked him. He didn't really know, did he? But how else would we get in? We'd hop the wall and then there's five of us that look very foreign. I was yeah. just going to suggest I unlock a door. But then we walk in and then there's five foreigners in an abbot in mourning. You see what I mean? You see the problem? Really the I think we type. should get some disguises. I can do my best if you really want me to. But it scares me. She's crying. She doesn't want to do it. Let's go and get I some disguises. I idea. don't want to be on I my own. own. Nova, Nova. I'm not Nova. good at fighting. I feel bad asking you. <laughs> oh, good God. <laughs> Maybe Quill should go. I'm not going in there on my own. That's an awful idea. I, I can't even go invisible. You've got Hesper on your side. True, but in my dreams. Yes. Th that's not... Dreams do come true, Quill. But, 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 I hope no, not. They, I hope yeah. not. Yeah, yeah. That, that's no, not... Wait. No, yes, that's yeah. Yeah. <laughs> wait, that's fair. Very quick. <laughs> I like it. Not wait, that one. Is that a title? <laughs> dreams do come true. <laughs> <laughs> if you really want me to, I'll do my best, but look at me. I'm a scholar, not a spy! She's getting really high pitched, so I think we need to ditch that plan. Even if she because goes invisible, she might, yeah, she, she'll peep when she gets seen. I'll pass out. She'll pass out. We are a master of espionage now, uh, since the mausoleum mission. You did have to Maybe I should do it. You almost got arrested. Yeah. You got stuck yeah, on a We got in trouble. Probably not. I forget the details. It's been a very traumatic it's, day. Yeah. Shall we go and get some disguises? Something to cover ourselves up a little bit? I mean, we really have to Maybe. cover ourselves up. Yeah, we, we do. We really have to cover ourselves yeah, up. Yeah, we do. I have, to, I have to look like someone completely different. Let's go to Rosalina, see if she's got any concoctions. She's, she's in a different She's in a different time, time now. <laughs> yeah, I think you mean Rose Meadow. Yeah. Rose Meadow. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Let's go to Rose Meadow, the centaur and ask if she's got any person shifting appearance concoctions. Polyjuice potion. Polyjuice potion, exactly what we need right now. I mean, um, we could try multiple angles of infiltration. Or we could leave town. Or I mean, we, yeah, we, we, we could just leave. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And just Go have that calling. heavy guilt weighing us down. If we leave, yeah. let's say theoretically we leave. And then we find out once we reach the next place or if the next place is gold thrown, we find out that Kaylee's rest burnt to the ground. Hundreds of people dead. Mm -hmm. How would we Sentry? feel about that? Sentry, no. Sentry's already crying. <laughs> you just hear this. Well, now I feel bad. <laughs> okay. This is catching. Sentry. <laughs> Easily the least stealthy of all of us. 100%. No offense. No, but... I totally agree. Okay. What's your plan? My plan? Yes. Uh, I, don't, I don't know. The place is so heavily fortified. <laughs> um, <laughs> you said I'm not, I'm not good at stealth. I'm, <coughs> I'm, I'm not particularly adept at climbing. I'm noisy, I'm so noisy! <laughs> no, no Frost. Yes, Master. If you were to... Let's say this um, statue was real and it could animate. Yes. Could you make it so? What? Could you 
<laughs> like hit it or something away from us and then distract it so that everybody goes <coughs> to it while we go <coughs> in. I can try. A big distraction might work. So we want to awaken the statue. Yes. I don't want to awaken the statue. Oh, I don't want to awaken the statue. Ah, Hiding in plain fiery. sight, we make a scene. Oh, so Night Frost goes in. Causes a ruckus. Causes a ruckus, and then we use the distraction to get in. That's actually... It's pretty good. Or they just go super alert and then guard every exit and entrance. Not into while a statue is going around destroying the place. No. That's if the statue comes to life in the first place. But worst case scenario. I mean, it's, it's likely because bad stuff seems to keep happening. <laughs> but but it might not. It's it's actually... or Night Frost can go and find both of them. None of us need to go. That's a really good point. I didn't think of the shadow just going in. What's the range on Echo? Uh, it's like, oh, yeah, yeah, but Echo, we, we discovered this. Echo can only communicate in boop boops. And... But Sentry can see through Echo's... He's a bit clumsy, though. No offence, I love Echo, but he... When he gets too far away from Sentry... He he's gets, very delicate. Yeah, you and he's been smashed up once. Not. I could. Well, I mean, it, it's we don't actually... It'd be nice for us to be able to save the people, but... At the very least, we can at least confirm that they're being held against their wills. Without us being in there. But then she did ask for evidence, and I don't think we visual evidence. evidence from a boop boop or a shadow weapon is a good idea. We can at least scout ahead to know what our odds are. Mm. Use that as our first port of call. Send either Night we Frost or Echo in. Scope it out. Well, we need to find where they are first anyway. Yep. Exactly. So I guess Night Frost and Echo. Okay. That sounds like a plan. Sure. After so forty-five send them, minutes. So are you gonna? So with Echo, like, so Night Frost can act independently. He he can basically detach himself as a shadow creature, like a little heartless, and then he can go off and do his own thing. And then he'll just report back to Lucius on what he finds. <coughs> you can't see through his eyes, but he can describe to you what yeah. he's seeing. Echo, it can act as its own creature, but the range on you being able to see through its eyes is only up to one hundred feet, I think, or one hundred twenty yeah. feet. You would need to be like next to the walls, <laughs> and even and, 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 and even then, it's going to get to a certain distance and it's going to lose that range. Yeah. So, but what, so or is the idea that you send Echo in just on his own and then he comes back and via beep boops and boop boops, sorry boops and boop boops, you question him like what what's the plan here is what I'm trying to get. I feel like literally that. I feel like <laughs> okay. Echo. Is it worth Echo? Getting potentially hit again. He could get smashed. I feel oh, like at, the, at least the, the <coughs> shadow is a shadow. And he can say words, because not just yeah. boop boops. He also is a little bit mad. I'm quite mad. Yeah. But he's aware Agreed, of it, but and he's working on it. I, the other guy I was must was also point out, contrary to what Miss Ayla believes, in my shadow form I can still be injured. And if I sustain too much damage, I become inert. I would not be able to form again for some time. And then you'll be trapped inside the Abbey. Mm. My shadow should return to Master Lucius automatically, but I would become... Uh, you would not be able to communicate with me for some time. Okay. Interesting. Some time being... Would, time I, for a turn is, a, I imagine, a little different. I could not say. Another Sundering's time? I, I don't believe so, but I could not tell you how long I will be. I will need to gather my energy back. Let's assume the worst. I cannot technically die without my full form being destroyed. Can invisibility be cast upon you? I do, I believe so. I am a creature in my shadow form. But uh, when I remain stationary, I become a shadow. I'm very difficult to see. Okay. Well, I but trust He you also are. always tries his best. <laughs> it does. He does. I have an alternate suggestion. What if? We pulled our resources that we've made in Kaylee's Rest so far and used some of the Guardians. To do what? I mean, there's a big smasher one. Versus an entire abbey. Of we do but have if we're them. asking for a distraction... We do have some allies. Alternatively, did they all have echoes? I know Tracker didn't, but... Some of them do. Some of them had echoes. I think Chipper and um, Sweep had their echoes. Scout is also a scout. He's True. literally a scout. 
I mean, maybe now is not the best of times to ask him about it, but yeah. then again. But would they want to get involved given that they spent their lives being sort of on the outside of society and they've sort of made their way here and then would they really want to put that at risk by being found inside an abbey? I mean, they're less detectable than us. And if, if we send in three echoes, one of them's going to find the right thing. That's will all be found. High risk of them being spotted. Yeah. Big floating orbs. Is there a way to track an echo back to a guardian? Don't know it's a guardian. Well, yeah. Well, I. And there are not many who's guardians the first people in they're going to interrogate. Rest. There is only. Everyone we've spoken this. to seems to know exactly who we're talking about. Yeah. They mention. Yeah. Guardians are rare it's enough that distinct. those guardians, everybody in Keeley's rest, is aware of them. They're like, oh yeah, they're the guardians. <laughs> like, you know, having five guardians in your town is a pretty big deal. I feel like we don't need to jeopardize those guardians anymore. More lives. They've already had. Let's send in a shadow. It's a shadow. We can send in a shadow. I'm just saying, if we need a distraction, there's a big smashy guardian that okay. probably wants to. So, what are you going to do while you send uh, Night Frost in? Are you going to go find somewhere to rest, or are you going to? What are you going to do? I guess we'll have to stay nearby. Yeah. I think you don't need to stay nearby. He can travel on his own. I mean, if we need to go spring into action. Like... Yeah, I mean, you could find like somewhere like in Kaylee's rest near nearish the abbey. If you want yeah. to. Okay. I think we, um... well, we and also what time are you Right now well. it's the morning. We should probably do this at night, shouldn't we? We should probably check in on Arvel and Valor as well. Okay. Alright, well let's let's do those things quickly then. So you want to pick up the potions. You want to check in with Arvel and Valor. Do we I think we were gonna move. And then are you gonna wait till night to send Night Frost in? Do we wanna do that subtly though? Like maybe send just one of us so that there's no chance that the Ashbringers follow us to them. Yeah, I don't actually know where we could move them. I think we've exhausted most of the places we've gone. I'm not talking about moving them. Like, I'm just talking about like if we go to them, then if Ashbringers are watching us, then they can see that we are talking to these two people who are clearly part of our... But if just one of us goes, then that's Ashbringers watching just one of the party. Out of curiosity, mm -hmm. just can I them. keep an eye out as we're walking around town for any, like, any of the guards that we saw around mm -hmm. us. So you act, you're actively yeah. watching for them. Make yeah. a perception check for me. I'm passively doing it. <laughs> All this time. <laughs> yeah. If you are actively, the thing is, is there's a difference between like, I'm aware that we're being followed, so I'm kind of keeping my ear out for them. And then there's Ayla doing this. No. <laughs> yeah. That was a five. <laughs> five. You are like literally every now and often, you'll just like turn and look behind you. I trust no one. There's nothing there. <laughs> and do I okay. pass down the street? Nothing there. I don't passively catch anything with 15. No, wait, I've got 20 still. Uh, depends. So it's sight-based, 15, mm -hmm. hearing-based, 20. Even when you're 15, even with your bad eye, you watch. And they keep a very far distance. Uh, not enough to overhear conversation, but there is always... You kind of spot a couple of them. They're the same young boy or young girl, probably in their sort of like late teens. And then there's normally a couple of hooded figures or armoured people nearby. And they're dressed to look like mercenaries, but you can see them kind of communicating with like slight hand signals. Yeah. They are absolutely following you. Not engaging, but just keeping an eye on where you are. Cool. Are they in earshot? I'm, no, I'm no. They are, they're dev Quill, you're pretty certain that they can't overhear whispered conversation. Or like you know, quiet conversation. If you're shouting, they'll probably hear it, but. I'm guessing you're gonna relay that to us. Yeah, yeah. So, number one, I don't think we should make contact with Arvel and Val, except maybe by a letter or a note or something to them. And number two, how are we going to break into the Abbey when they seem to be following us? I have a thought, and it's a dark thought. Mm-hmm. We get the jump on these mercenaries, and we leverage them to get inside. How? We could, I haven't thought that far. We could leave the city, go a little way out. They can't follow us that far. And if they do, then they'll be on their own. This is a dark thought, actually. Thinking about it, this is a bad idea. <laughs> this is even I quite worse. like it, actually. No. If, I, if Ayla likes it, it's probably a bad, a bad 
a bad move. <laughs> Maybe. I think the best we could do is take their equipment and their looks and try and get in, but it's a long shot. Mm. We need to get away from these people watching us. But I could just send Night Frost, and they won't even know. True. Just send Night Frost. I'll just send Night Frost. Although if that doesn't work, that's time wasted if we're waiting until the night to do it. We can send him whenever. Yeah, he'd have a better chance at nightfall, but... I'll do it at sundown, how about that? Yeah. Okay, so you're gonna send Night Frost at sundown. You also wanted to go pick up your potions from Rose Meadows. Yeah. Yeah. Now remind me, when you went to Rose Meadows, you bought regular healing potions and the greater healing potion, if I remember? I think we all just went regular. Because yeah, how much yeah. how much did it cost? I can't remember. It depends on you guys. I forgot to no, no, mark how, off how what you. How much is a greater? Greater is two hundred. No, we didn't. No way. So you just we bought the regulars. regulars. Okay. Just so I think you bought her out of regular <coughs> potions. I remember you bought her out of regulars. Okay. Um, okay. So when you go to pick up uh, Rose Meadows ointments, uh, Rose Meadows potions, she's there. Her hut, her her shop has been mostly repaired now. Um, and when you enter, the little jingle of the bell. Um, and you see her great white horse body and her long pink and blonde hair. Oh my goodness, it's my favorite customers. Oh, hello. Oh, Lord, bird boy. Uh, hello, Rose Meadow. Sweet bird. <laughs> I believe you had uh, an order for some Yes, potions. Malika, beautiful Malika came by and she ordered a bunch of things for you. Would you like them now? Oh, please. Okay. <laughs> She trots, clip clop, clip clop out into the back. Uh -huh. Clip clop, clip clop comes back. She brought that little wicker basket with a pink bow. It's very and nice. It's stuffed stuff. with flowers, and then inside it there are three potion bottles. That's um, beautiful. Rosemary. She's like, okay, let me just describe each one. So this is, and she holds up a uh, glass bottle with white lacing um, and, a, and a small uh, blue corn flower rose attached to it. It's like, this is a potion of greater healing. That's uh, that wow. one. And then this. Now, your friend told me that you needed potions to ward against flames, mm -hmm. but also maybe you needed something to be a bit sneaky. So. That's a thing? You, well, sort of. So this one, and she holds it up, and it's a very small bottle, almost like a little tiny miniature bottle. Mm -hmm. with only a few drops of liquid in it. Feed clear, fine. clear honey colored kind of liquid um, and attached to it is a little ch a bee charm, a little bee charm. Oh, this nice. is called a potion of diminution. It will make you quite small. Di diminution? Dim 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 I don't how know how to say it. How small are we talking? Pretty small. <laughs> it makes you like smaller than a child, but it will include your gear. It will include your clothes, so you won't be naked. How long for? That lasts about an hour. That's a very important fact to know. Yeah. An hour. Mm -hmm. But it helps you like, you know, it makes you quicker, it makes you easier to hide and stuff like that. Can and you then the still, last... do, you, do you still... Makes you a you... little weaker. That's what I was wondering. Makes you a little weaker. Okay. okay. Um, but then the other one, and then the last one, and this one is bright orange, kind of uh, mixtures of colors of flames on the inside, and a kind of shaped heart-like bottle. Um, and attached to it is a red, uh, like <coughs> poppy flowered cluster. Um, and this is a potion of fire resistance. Ah, perfect. Mm. 350, points 50. Brilliant. 50 off the top. Who wants what? Do we have any more healing potions in our arsenal? I, I have one. one. You bought out all of my last ones where your friends did. The bird and the nice blue lady and Mr. Fancy Elf. What about your healing salves? Well, I still have the healing salves, but uh, your friend, they, they wanted these ones specifically. But you can buy the other ones if you like. I got nothing, so. I have four silver. How much? Total? I mean, I got nothing in terms of potions. And how do you have so little money? I, I don't know. Did you buy shampoo and stuff? That's what he's got left now. I refuse to help Chris Trot anymore. There's no way you've only got four silver. I'm pretty sure Mark told you that you had some money no, back. No, that is what he has now. I think I gave I it up I think he gave the, you um, like a hundred gold. I paid for my spell clash thing. You did. Yeah. Mm. But I think, it. yeah, but Arvel gave you doesn't money matter. back. It doesn't matter. No, he, he No, no, he it gave it to Group Fund. 
Okay. How much have we got in the group fund? I'm pretty sure oh, that we've got I've, enough, I've heard but... Mark say you've got 100 gold at least three it times now. It doesn't matter. Yeah, but it was that's 100 what, That's what Lucius has. That's what Lucius has. Rosemo says, well, the, the healing Slav is... Slav. Is Slav. <laughs> there it is. Uh, oh. is. It's 140 gold per dose. Now, I can do up to four doses. But it's quite difficult to make. It might be worth. How healy is it? One dose. Oh, I can't remember. It's a magic item. It's called Kegorn's Ointment. They also take an action to... Um, yeah. So it takes an action so instead of a... Yeah, if you search up Keg Kegorn's Ointment, but. it's called. So, we make one person really flame resistant, small and invisible. Not all three. We don't need two or three. Yeah. Why not? I think... Um, oh, the flame resistance lasts for an hour as well. I found a gunpowder keg. Uh, it's spelled K-E-O... G H T O M S. It's a magic item. Slav. It's called Keg Orms Ointment. Keog Tom's Ointment. Yeah, Keog Tom's. Keog Tom. 2d8 plus 2. It's an action to apply and it's four doses. Okay. Four doses with that one salve. If, well, no, it's, so you have to pay her 140 gold per dose. So it's like a oh, potion. Oh, shit. Okay. But it's one item. So one person oh. holds it, and then you can use it up to four times. But it's an action to apply it to yourself or another creature. Mm -hmm. It's not like a potion, which is like You've blood, blood, blood. No. You've got a potion. You've mm -hmm. got a potion. Mm -hmm. Let's get two, three. No, we've got one greater. So you can use the one four times. Wait, no. it's, yeah, He's imagine said, it's yeah. like one potion that you can use up to four times if you buy four doses, or how many doses you buy. Okay. So if you so buy two doses, buy, you can use it so twice. There's, there's, yeah, so it's one item, so it will be for one person to hold. Yes, yes. That's but, sentry, but sentry has lay on hands. Yeah, so I can heal people. Mm. So 560 gold. We don't have to, doses. but just bear in mind I've got that... healing. No, I know you <laughs> do. You? Do I you? Do you though? <laughs> But it's you... also garbage. It's not lay on hands. Lay on hands is incredible. Yeah, I know. <laughs> but you go down a lot more it's often. Pretty good. It's pretty good. You know what I mean? Ten. Can In I terms have a fire of like, that's a ten. Wait. Fire resistance. I'm just saying that if I go down, oh. one of you needs to do something, unless you give me something. Two doses is. Well, two keep ways. in mind that if you have the ointment, you can't apply it to yourself if you're down. But someone can yeah. look over and. Yeah. True. Still your stuff. It's fine, as long as we don't have to get it. I'm just No, I'm saying we should get but it. I'm just saying no, don't What I would say annoying. is taking the ointment off of Ayla's body would, would probably be an action, action as well, and then it'd be an action another action to apply mm. it. Yep. Unlike a potion which I imagine you guys have like Look. little bandoliers and stuff where you're like, oh Ayla's pull it out and then pour it in her mouth, like that's an action, or like if for yourself. Whereas the Slav, it's like, right, dig it out no, of no. a bag. It's just if we open all up the kit. Food, but we don't have to. Jeez. I said Here, Slav. Tom, that's not very efficient. I think let's I'm not saying that to her. Yeah. <laughs> two doses. I think we okay. have two doses. Yeah. So but currently, you go, so currently I can't help anybody if anyone's done. So 280 if you want two doses. Sure. I can. Kay. I have like 50 gold. Okay. Uh, Group one. If you want. Yeah. Let's not. Let's focus on that later because I just want to wrap up with some other stuff. So we've got two healing slabs. Anything immediate? Yeah. Anything immediate <laughs> you need to do? Because I want to try and, uh, if possible, I want to do the night frost thing before you go. Can we? Get Rose Meadow, like write a letter for Arvel and Valor, and get Rose Meadow to send it, either send it or deliver it. Yes, to them. she'll do that. Yeah, and yep. basically just updating them on yep. what we're doing. She's saying, kind, she'll do that. Yeah, saying yep. that we're being followed by people, so we're trying to stay away from them. Mm -hmm. Yep, and she'll do that. that and also, we should tell them, her that we're being followed and and to yeah. watch out for. She's like, oh, I keep, I'm, I, I'm very careful now in the city. Okay. I mean, it's hard for it. She can't sneak around, so she has to kind of look out for herself. Yes. Um, oh. It's big, big centaur lady. Okay. We saved her. So that night, wait, so you guys go back to the Richard Tavern in North Street, the one that you so, stayed at last time. That you didn't give a name. Yeah, I haven't come up with a name for it yet. Is that the one? That's the one though that Arvel and Valor is. No, no they're, they're at the Barrel and Over, which okay. is in South Street. So, yeah. During, the, we'll just call it North Street Tavern for now, and then you send Night Frost off. You've got this. Very well, Master Lucius. You wish for me to find this rest keeper and Star Wars. I do not know them, but I will look for people being kept prisoner. Yes, people that look like they're in a jail of some kind or held captive or Very look well. really unhappy. Very well. It may take me some time. I Can may not we... return until morning. 
can we describe them and also, or maybe like, yeah, the, do we know what kind of robes that they're? Yeah, you can describe the symbols of like, um, yeah, their face. Like would symbols wear. of their mm -hmm. face. Yeah, so. you can absolutely describe that. Look for that. Yeah. I mean, to be honest, Night Frost knows the symbols <coughs> of the gods anyway, because yeah. he was around when the war was on, so he knows what those look like. I think okay. Specify to him what, yeah. Yeah. So, the night passes. You take a long rest because this has happens overnight. Oh. You. Because he can speak to you over distances, but you can also get the impression that he's concentrating sometimes. And he gives you a run by a port. Night Frost makes his way on the cover of night, he sneaks over the walls, down into the abbey. I found several buildings. It appears that some people are being kept prisoner inside. Others are guarding them, but they do not. They appear to be worshippers of Palador. I'm now moving on to the next building. There seems to be a training hall here with a forge. He is making weapons and armor, lots of them. There is a warrior here. He practices with magic and steel. They do not appear to be here. I will move on to the main abbey. He reports as he makes his way through the rooms, he begins describing that there are patrolling paladors, uh, faithful, armored, wielding weapons. They don't appear to be in a state of mourning. They be appear to be in a state of preparation. They patrol around. I see the statue in the cloister. There is definitely magic of it, Master Lucius. Makes his way into the church. I see her, the woman that spoke to you before, this abbotess. She is delivering a sermon. She speaks of a great purge. It will be happening very soon. She says that they are nearing the final stages. Something is strange. I will follow her. Be very careful. Very well. I have not found the ones you described. They do not appear to be in the upper grounds. They must be somewhere below. Right. Good job so far. In the... There is a secret door, a latch, built just behind the altar. Uh, there is a trap door. She is descending now. There are old tunnels here, Master Lucius. They wind. These are old. Far older than the Abbey. There are rooms here. They look like they were once guard posts, but they have been turned. I see, yes, I find the ones that you are looking for. They look to be imprisoned. They are being fed, but they are definitely not here by their own will. There is something else. I sense an incredible power. The abbotess is making her way towards it, is deeper below the abbey, beyond where these two are being kept prisoner. Do you wish for me to continue? Absolutely not. Very well. He begins making his way. Oh, I mean, I'm gonna make perception checks, but he's very hard to see if he's careful, which he's being. Yeah, yeah. and it's also mega dark. It's, it? it's mega dark, and he's made of shadow. He can literally blend in. Um, yeah, he makes his way back in the morning. However, oh as the sun begins to rise, as dawn arrives, it's a strange dark clouds just begin to pool like they begin drifting in almost like a, th a storm is coming but there isn't the other weather you know that there's no storm coming but there are dark clouds uh, you hear horses nearby begin to neigh and buck and panic dogs begin barking birds that were in the trees around the gardens of the mausoleum just burst and fly away in, an, in a terror And that's where we're in today. Okay, <laughs> cool. <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> oh boy. Something right is afoot. Something oh. wicked this way comes. Yeah. Something is frying just pan. Just Something's just afoot. <laughs> mm. Oh crap! This is want, just a foot. You didn't. You didn't want old Night Frost just no, to go a little not. bit further. No. Not at all. No. I, I knew something bad. Okay. Just gonna get absorbed mm. into oh. Well, let me read out some donations. Lone Wolfie, thank you very much. Hey, hi, Rollers, hope you're well. Question, does Sentry not have <coughs> divine bullshit sense? As a paladin ability, I hate it, because it makes it impossible to trick the goddamn paladin in the group, but seeing tree when we in distress is not acceptable. Well, uh, divine sense only allows you to tell if a creature's undead, fiend, fae. Yeah. It's, I mean, it's useful, but it, I wouldn't say it, it's... I've valid. also got abilities to 
Yeah. Right. Uh, Mule Monster donated, thank you very much. Hey guys, I finally caught up on YouTube just in time, so here I am now watching live. You guys all get me through the week between sessions, and thanks for being sponsored in DM my group. Thanks very much, you guys rock. Thank you. Uh, C. Cadwell, thank you very much for the donation. First time watching live, I've spent the last two weeks listening, watching nothing but high rollers. Wow, Kept up on everything, so I'm up to date. Wore my HR shirt to my weekly game night wow. last night and introduced you guys to some new fans. Love from the wow, US. Thank you so much. That's thank you. amazing. Night Jar, donated, no message. Night, thank you very much. <laughs> Sweet Night Jar. Uh, Jolteon FireEye donated, uh, first time donating, but for Tracker. Thank you very Aww. much, it's very sweet. Hey. Frank the NPC donated, why do you guys start an uprising in every town you enter? Just trying to leave carnage in your wake, the Iron Sloths strike again. We're not trying. No, you're not trying. It's already it happened. happens. Varys, thanks for the donation, no message. Darth Dave 41 donated, next time on High Rolls, the gang visit a town where they don't make the like of the guard captain of misery. No, no, that can't be true. <laughs> Thanks very much. <laughs> Not Alex donated, well, I may be sick with a cold, I've lost my voice, and the D&D <laughs> mini I painted yesterday has dried a colour a color so <laughs> orange it's looking like a barbarian Donald Trump. But at least High Rollers <laughs> keep producing great stuff. See you next week. Thanks very Thank much. You. Met Manu, thanks for the donation and message. Jump's donation. Cool, Thank you. Mm. Yeah. Ace of Thorns <laughs> donated. Eros, a Sherlock Humes production. The episode part one. The spice is all. Part two. This mission, should you choose to accept it. Very good. Ah, thank you very much, Ace. Lone Wolf, you donated again. The scene with the Field Warden was amazing. Therizden levels are amazing. Only this time, it's not a batshit crazy spectator, but rather just the general state of the party. You guys are a joy to watch. Thank you so much for being amazing. Mm. Thank you. Thank you very much. And a Ha, 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 no. Ha, no. Thank you so much. No S. Mitchell, 86. Thank you very much. No message, though. Thank you very thank you. much. Thank you. Azul Aura donated thanks to Stonehenge Ray for covering <laughs> bets last week while I was away, but I'm back now. We had one daddy this week, and of the 83 people who bet, 11 people 83. bet wow. correctly. Did I think we? this episode may be my favorite yet. Both story and RP were amazing today. Aww. Just one daddy. I don't even oh. hear them. He mentioned I'm, he said I'm we were talking to the Ashbringer. Yeah. yeah. He's like, uh, Daddy says. Daddy uh, says. Oh, he was, yeah, he was talking to that Sunscreen, was it? reassuring. Death. Daddy says, Daddy oh, yeah, sorry, that's that's yeah. Yeah. purpose. So with that, that's the end of the episode. Thanks very much for watching. We hope you enjoyed it. RP heavy sesh. Yeah. Little bit of shopping at the end. Tiny bit. Katie did say that they were going to be shopping. I was joking. This I know, but I you did. I just wanted to, you're like, you I did. have all of these plans. And I was like, we could just go to the pub. <laughs> <laughs> we'll find out. What happens next week? Bad what stuff. will the party do? Bad stuff. Are they going to try party and bust die. in? Are there terrible mm. things about to happen? We're going to screw mm. up. Find out next time. And what are you going to do? You're going to check out Display and D&D Beyond. Thanks. Display! 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 Beyond. Display! Display. 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 That's it. The episode's Display. over. Display. We're done. Go See away. ya. Bye. 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 Bye now. Bye. Goodbye. Bye. 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 <laughs>